Round two has begun. What's up, everybody? First, though, most importantly, we're going to do an unboxing. What do you think of that? All right, let's get some light over there. Get you guys looking down a little bit. Let's see if it'll focus. Hey, look at that. It focused. Damn, Logitech. It's coming around. Making things happen. All right, let me do this. I got to pause this. I got to pull up the chat. And cool. This is, I think this is uh, the, the rest of the giveaway stuff that... Um, will take me through for the next like month or two uh, at least a month uh, hopefully closer to two months so that you know we got some we'll do mad covid giveaways all right let's see what we got what's that oh that battery bat oh my god that's gigantic i did not think it was anywhere near that big oh my god what the hell now it makes sense why it was 25 dollars Oh, oh god, that's big. <laughs> I mean, I have pretty big hands. That's a that's a big one. Deary me, Big Willie and Ken Hill. How are you guys? So, I got this. Um, I try to buy as like multiple smaller I thought it was gonna be smaller um, I try to buy multiple smaller uh, what's up John um, uh, burn in a fire lipo bags so that I can put uh, smaller numbers of them in each bag so that if one of them pops off um, it doesn't ruin every single lipo that I own uh, but this is awful big I so I got this so that I could replace this one here, uh, but it ain't gonna fit there, not even close. So, hmm, I'm gonna figure out something to do with this. This is really tall. Um, all right, figure something out. <laughs> Jesus, that's way too big. <laughs> Well, I tried, man. I tried to be safe. I tried to not, you know, burn the house down and kill everyone. <sighs> Pro Proton, if you have no life, then, then neither do the rest of us. So don't, don't throw all of us under that bus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got. Some of this, I think some of these props are for me. Um, they were blowing out 5143s, which are my favorite five-inch props, so I got... A bunch of those um, they, they were also blowing out some funny racecraft props um, let's take a look at these this is a bananas prop this prop is bananas that is a 76 pitch 3076 look at that I've been kind of blown away by how well balanced racecraft props are um, over the last I don't know, a little bit here. Um, so yeah, these were a, a dollar a bag, and I'm just super curious as to what a 76 pitch will be like. It should be real fast, and it should have really nice throttle resolution while going really fast. So uh, yeah, that'll be fun. And I got enough so that some of you guys can join the uh, can join the madness with me. I gotta be honest though. This is the one right here. These are the props that I'm excited about. I'll do a, I'll do a slow reveal, I guess. <laughs> Look at that! A racecraft six-blade five-inch prop. Um, yeah, this, this should be interesting. <laughs> uh, anybody interested in going on this weirdo six blade prop adventure with me? Let me know. Maybe we'll have a little, uh, six blade competition, six blade edit competition. 
What uh, what do you guys think about that? I think it would be pretty fun, but I'm a crazy person. But I did get enough of these, and I got them in pink too. I did get enough of these for us to do that, um, where like we could do a little contest. Maybe it's a couple bucks to get in, and then uh, to cover the the shipping and and whatever the hell these cost. I think these were actually two bucks a bag. But come on, they got six blades. If they've got twice as many blades, then it only makes sense that they cost twice as much, right? Um, yeah, I got a bunch of these 3076s. These will, we'll do something fun with these. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I got so many of these. Yeah, we're totally doing a contest with these. That's going to be fun. Um, and I'm also, I'm, I got these uh, 3143s in green in hopes that, the, uh, that this is a UV reactive green. Um, because I'm putting uh, uh, purple ultraviolet uh, arm LEDs on the one rig. So we'll see. Holy crap, I got a lot of these six blade props. <laughs> I didn't think I got this many. Okay, if they were two bucks a bag, I wouldn't have gotten this many. Um, so they must have been just a dollar a bag. Um, all right, more 5143s. I tried to really load up on, on their 5143s because they were only a dollar a bag. Um, and I used to spend, these used to be like three something per bag. So I got a bunch of these, uh, admittedly some of these are for me, but some of these are also for giveaways. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm really trying to find uh, the gear that I run cheap for you guys. Like I, I would love the giveaways to be all, um, hey, here's the gear that I run because I've spent a lot of time kind of making sure that the gear I'm running is really good, um, good quality, good price, that kind of stuff. But um, I, 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 for, the, for the giveaways to be worth it, uh, I have to find it cheaper. So that's why I went kind of ham on these. I should have gotten more of these and less of these, but I don't know, whatever. FPV is all about fun. So th this, is, this is more for, you know, flying good. <laughs> and this over here is for having fun is my... Uh, my current thought process, but I did get a bunch of these 5143s, so I will be able to do at least one or two uh, giveaways with them, so that you guys can experience the absolute magic that is the, the T-Motor 5143. Um, this was free, so I got this. I think this is going to be a giveaway with the um, with Billy's rig. Uh, this is just a universal BMC 3D uh, session mount with the slot down on the bottom here so you can just zip tie it down. Um, cool. Yeah. All right, so we got that. I'm, I'm actually going to even just... Yeah, look. Uh, here's the... Uh, here's that rig. And it's it made me think of it because it's orange. So, yeah. Although, this frame won't really allow you to, to mount this, so I guess it's not for this. Uh, this will go with... I guess a glide. This will definitely work on a glide, so I guess I'll give this away with, with whenever the next glide frame that I give away is. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I got some of these fellas to restock for the giveaways. Oh, right. This is it though right here, guys. This is why, this is why I ordered from them, and then I noticed there was a bunch of crazy stuff on sale. Um, so I snagged some of it here for giveaways, but, oh yeah, good call, budget. Good call. Here is the excitement. Wait, now I gotta spin it. Let's see how good the Logitech is gonna do. Not very good. When I used to do the hand behind thing, it never really worked all that well. But let's try it. See, why doesn't it? Like, come on. What if I cover it and then force it? Hey, 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 there we go, there we go. Look what that says. 25,000 KV, yo. I'm gonna have to uh, cut the connectors off because the B-Brain board doesn't use these, uh, it uses the smaller connectors. Um, but, according to the best freestyle whoop pilot in all the land these are the jam and uh, I cannot wait I cannot wait to get these on the the, the newbie drone rig right now has 20,000 KV um, 
and these are 25 so that should be quite the difference um, I have absolutely no problem sacrificing the the runtime because it's so quick to uh, swap tiny loop batteries uh, that yeah I just don't I don't care what's this oh look at this I just for curiosity I got these these are the uh, 6143s look at that big one look at that big boy ooh man that feels 6.8 grams though my god is that heavy I think these I think these are like 3.8 grams. Man, 6.8 grams. So that really makes a lot of sense as to why all of the 6-inch rigs have such a hard time because we're just not putting big enough motors on them. So, I mean, yeah, man. A 6.8 gram prop, I would guess that's going to need like a 26 or a 27 pitch minimum to really be able to spin that, if not more. Um, cool. Good data point on the weight. I, I love that, uh, that T-Motor puts the weight on the... Uh, on the label that's that's really nice um, oh more more six plates my god I got a lot of those six plates and then yeah more of these guys for giveaway restocks and ooh, did I snag a micro eagle I did I snagged another micro eagle they had them for for cheapish um, cool did they get everything I think so Swapped for three blue. Okay. That's fine. Sweet. Yeah, buddies. There's your unboxing. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get these guys put away. I'll just use this box. They all fit in it. To begin with, they should all fit in it now. Why am I all itchy? Is this box filled with locusts? What's happening? All right. We got these crazy fellas. Wait, let me pull. Let me pull two bags out for myself, and I'll do the same over here. I want the blue ones though. There we go. Set of blues for me, and I guess a set of pinks for me as well. Uh, I pulled two of these. Okay, good. And then these guys, I'm actually going to have to snag a bunch of. So like gray, red, red, uh, red, gray. Pretty much all the grays are mine um, because I run those on the front. And uh, I break them a lot more often. So I pretty much got myself all the grays and then got, although man, this is a lot of grays. This is probably too many grays for just me um, but these blues and probably the greens are going to be for you guys although it depends if, if the greens light up really nice under UV I might uh, keep some of those can you guys hear me over the crinkling of the bags I wonder oh god uh, can we test that now do I have something with a uh, something running with a I think I do right this has a big old UV LED. I just gotta make sure that none of the uh, motor wires are touching. And they are not. All right, let's see. Let's use a quad as a flashlight. What do you guys say? Just double check one more time that none of these motor wires are touching. All right, we should be good. Uh, look at that, they do. They do light up. They are a little bit UV reactive, just enough, I think. It's hard to see, but yeah. Cool, I will check that out further. Um, if anybody's interested in that huge pulse bag, uh, let me know. I'll sell it to you cheap. I don't think I've touched my face yet, so let me go and wash my hands so I don't get the herp. And I will be right back. Muchachos. Um, all right, man. I wish uh, this is so wasteful. The, the, like just the whole single set of props in a bag thing really bothers me. It's just 
it's just really wasteful. Let me uh, <clears throat> let me find something for you guys to watch. Hold on one second. Let's spin you around here. We'll get back to the matter at hand. And let me give you guys another raw something or other. David, are you sure? It's huge. <clears throat> I don't know how I'm going to ship it to you. You know what? Let me uh, let me see if any local guys want it first because shipping's going to be a pain in the ass on that. I don't have anything big enough to ship that in. Um, if none of the no local guys want it, though, it's all yours, brother. Where was this? Oh, yeah. Here's the best spot in Charleston. Not Charleston. I don't live in Charleston anymore. Alpharetta. Here you guys go. Why did the why 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 did the audio go away? That was weird. Has the audio not been working the whole time? What is man? OBS is just 
brutal. Um, weird. Very weird. Like, why would the bench... Yeah, OBS is weird, man. OBS is brutal, actually. It just it just doesn't work a lot. There's just, like, a lot of situations where it, I, I'm just like, oh, okay, so you're not working now? Great, thanks. Um, okay, so... I'm actually going to put this one over here. I cut the one a little bit too short, but that's okay. Because the wires are kind of extra long on the one we gonna be all right everything's gonna be fine nobody panic everybody panic this is the moral of the story after the video okay good yeah it was weird i changed scenes and it's um i didn't change anything else and when i came back to this scene there was no like it had turned the audio off like i mean you guys saw it <laughs> Couldn't see me not changing anything, but I, I swear I didn't change anything. <laughs> Alright, let's get this going. Um, if you're going to do this method of stripping, um, very, very gentle. Very, 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 very gentle with these guys. Um, I try to not even... Uh, I try to not even make it through the silicone. I try to just dent the silicone so that when I dig my fingernail in... Um, there's an existing dent, and then when I pull, it just rips right at that dent. Um, the point being, you don't want to nick any of the little strands that are inside of there. Um, see, that that was like way easier since I, I dented it than trying to leave that dent by myself uh, with my fingernails. Best case is to do it all with your fingernails, but my, uh, my thumbnail is all jacked up from picking it. During therapy because I'm a nervous wreck and <laughs> have anxiety issues out the, the ace. But that's all right. I shall live. All right, let's get it going. Did I not turn the soldering iron on? Of course not. Okay, so. Get you out of here. We don't need any lighters right now. Right, let's get this guy pointed down. Give you guys a good... Point of view is best I can at least of what on earth is going on here. And oh, let me also turn this back on. There we go. That looks better. Yeah. Whoops. Alright, soldering iron, are you hot yet? Or are you still cold as ice? Very still as cold as my ex-wife's glare. I'm trying to quote Fraser and failing. Lilith? No. No, not hot yet. Not hot yet. No. Come on, man. Heat up. Thank you. Just gotta tell it what you want. If you don't tell people and inanimate objects what you want, They'll never know. There we go. That's what I just wanted to do real quick there. Just, you know, see something messed up on the bench? Just fix it real quick. So you don't forget. Oh, God. What did I do that for? I fixed it, and then I broke it. That's better. Okay! Um, who's got the series? What's, what's, what series? Who are you guys talking about? Was I talking about something? <laughs> oh, 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 you're watching this. Budget, what, uh, what series? What was I just talking about? I don't even remember. You're watching this on a 60-inch TV? Oh my god, that's, that's horrifying. What if I solder the lens? Arrgh! Um, alright, and you said family, so I'll try my best not to, not to just unleash a, a barrage of horrible obscenities to poison and, and toxify the, the potential youth in the room. <laughs> Alright, getting the iron down on the table, nice and flat. Big point of contact, so there'll be no wiggles and no wobbles. 
solder, push solder through the wire, the strands of wire, and get out of there. Solder, strands of wire, get out of there. Pull the solder up from the bottom, let the strands get hot, and push some through. Get in there. All right, I can't do it without more on the uh, little spoolie spoolie deal. <laughs> oh, Frasier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best TV series of all time. What's the what's the guy in the meme say? Convince me otherwise. Fight me. If you don't think it's true, fight me for it. <laughs> fight my wife and I actually. <laughs> She'd fight to the death on that one, too. Get out of there. And... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And... All right. Job done. As they say, in the greatest of Britons. Okay, so wait, one of these was a little bit longer than the other one. What was I using, the short one on this side? Uh, okay, this one's a little short. I think the short one was on this side. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have equalized that, but I was being lazy. Um, so, you know, whoever wins the giveaway for this is gonna have to deal with one side being shorter than the other. It's, it's gonna be tragic, it's gonna be a real it's going to be a real horror show for them. Just kidding. It's not going to make any difference. They'll never notice it. Stream flight test. Mark Rober. Oh, nice. Wait. Oh, all three. <laughs> flight test. What's Mark doing? I love Mark Rober, man. I watch every single thing that he does. He's so good. Oh, Billy, uh, Big Willie. I remember that. I remember you telling me that they think I'm funny. All right, good. I'll still try to behave, though. Still, uh, still feel like sometimes I'm ruining the youth of, of America single-handedly. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's solder. Let's. So no, I won't do it again. Dur. Durs. It's onders. It's got a hard on. It's a hard on. Onders. First to call it out wins nothing. Farting to make your lighter make you lighter. Now we're talking. Although, isn't methane lighter than air? So wouldn't it ostensibly make you heavier? Maybe? I guess you could just test that by uh, taking a mouthful of helium, or a lungful of helium. I don't know why, I just I made lung singular. I don't think you could just breathe into one lung. Be kind of cool though. Alright, that's started to flatten out in a way that I don't necessarily like. Let's just push this in. There we go, that's better. Yeah, these ones that are not staggered are like really not a problem. You just have to pay a little bit more attention. And just um just don't push down so hard. That That's really where the problem is. If you push down too hard and really fan the wires out, that's where the uh, the problem can come from. Always check your work. 5X loop, taking a look. And it looks fine. Give it a little, a little bit of force. Make sure it's not going to pop right off. And we're good to go. Next. <laughs> Proton says that's deep. Nobody caught the uh, nobody caught the reference, the the hard on reference. It's a pretty deep cut, I will admit. I will admit, but I, I have faith in you guys. I think somebody'll uh, 
I mean, mainly because I'm saying the the first name of the of the one of the main characters. I mean, among other things, should be pretty easy. Hey, what's up, Zachary? Ah, nice. Yeah, Zachary, I'm gonna try to do. Um, I actually have it as a reminder on my phone, because that's kind of the only way I remember anything these days. Uh, I'm gonna try to do more. Uh, I'm gonna try to stream more often for shorter periods of time. And a part of that is going to be trying to stream at random weirdo times um, for the people that are working. Well, just basically for the people that can't get to my regular streams, right? Like, the streams get a thousand views, and but there's only usually maybe, you know, 50 to 100 of us on the actual stream itself. So I know there's a lot of people that, for some reason or another, um, can't make it or, you know, forget about it um, because... YouTube's notification system is the biggest pile of dog dirt in all the land. Dog dirt is what they call dog crap in uh, Great Britain. Because, quite frankly, they're just better at the English language than us. Prove me wrong. When, which kind of makes sense since, you know, they created it and all. <laughs> Over there in England... All right, first one's first. Do this one without the tweezers, because I like to live dangerously. All right, that stopped flowing. Next. Uh, can you make a theme of one of your streams going through your organizational methods for storing parts and props that you have? That is a fucking great idea, homeboy. What was that? You alright? Yes. Did you die? No. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, sh screw it. We'll do it now. Uh, let me finish this up and I'll, and I'll show you my little prop setup. Um, yeah, I'll do a, an abbreviated version of it real quick. And then, um, it's actually a really good idea for like a proper... A proper. I'm not gonna do an edit, but I'll do it a, a longer form version on a, uh, a full length stream. That's a really good idea. What is? Wh why is this like fighting? What's happening here? It's kind of like, it's pulling, and I don't know why. The second one must not be as long as the first. All right, so I'm just I'm being real lazy. And it's fighting me, because that's what happens. So, let's take a second, breathe, clean the tip, and tin the tip, and come back at it. All right, so that's great. It just fell off. <laughs> Get back on there. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got it this time. Putting it at an angle so it hopefully doesn't hit the middle pad. Holding it flatter, more flat. Flattering. And just butchering it. Just, this is not going well. All right, bailing, taking this middle one off, resetting. And... Let's try this one more time. Let's try this one more time. Sometimes things just don't cooperate. And instead of bashing your head in them, um, you just got to take a step back and redo it. Undo and redo. Man, this one's being a real jerk. It just will not, the, the wire just will not flatten out the way that I'd like it to. Okay. There we go. That's better. That's what I wanted. Try to get the wires as flat to the pad as possible. Um, solder is a terrible mechanical 
um, device. Like it's not strong trying to hold two pieces together. Um, it's very good at passing electricity. So the moral of the story is the closer that you get the wires to the pad, um, the less <clears throat> the less solder there's not going to be like a big wall of solder trying to hold it on, right? Like it's it's just going to be a little thin surface of solder between the pad and the wire, and that's going to make that joint much, much, much stronger. Um, the proof is in the pudding with this. I've been doing this for the whole time I've been building 5-inch rigs, and I've never had a pad uh, let go. Uh, it will It will rip the entire pad off, which is pretty rare, or it'll, it'll actually rip the wire. 99% of the time, it'll literally rip the, the amount of, if I get enough force into it, um, it'll rip the, uh, the wire itself, rather than pulling the pad off, and rather than um, breaking the solder joint off, which is kind of a combination of things. Um, it's not pulling the pad off because I'm not getting the pad super hot, and I'm not pushing down really hard and, and weakening the, the adhesive below the pad up. Um, and then the, uh, the, the solder joints are not, uh, cold joints at all. So they're nice and strong. And I do see a tiny little blob of solder in between two of these joints, which would have been a problem. And that is why you always check your work. So I'm just going to dig that out and take another look. And now we're all set. Yep. That's totally fine. So that about does it for this repair. Let's just get these bolted back on. I will give it a quick once over. Uh, you guys can kind of see the, the once over process that I tend to do. All right, we got, some <clears throat> we got some action in the chat. Digging the rays of sunlight. Yeah, pro and I get some, some nice sunlight around this time of year in uh, the office here, dog, dog eggs. Um, having to, having to force my home office working from home for a month into my hobby space so i actually have to clean up the massive mess of a workbench well zachary y you've described like my normal situation here um that hurt a lot man i just smashed my elbow into this fucking mount god damn it uh yeah yeah it was bridged big willy but it was uh it was just a little ball of solder which came right out with the uh the tweezers um, but yeah, I, um, I have one desk and one room for workbench for this, as well as um, remote workspace with my work laptop uh, and my editing uh, tower slash whatever, the, the, you know, my main computer. That, that'll change at some point when I get off my ass and finally get this damn... Uh, laptop that Brad scored for me uh, at a ridiculous price uh, transferred over. I, I have 11, 12, 13 years of, of stuff and saved passwords and, and just random things hidden anywhere and everywhere on this um, tower. So it's, it's taken me a little bit longer than I would like to, um, to get that organized so that I can replace it with the laptop, but I'm getting there slowly but surely. I am getting there. All right, and you know I am gonna I am gonna replace this arm um, because ugh, there's just a lot of carbon carbon missing on this uh, on the tip of this arm. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna replace this arm. I have to be better about this. I, I arms are not expensive, um, and I just I need to get better about replacing them. Cause at the point that this arm is right now, it'll like if I take a hit on this corner, this carbon will just fold up and the and the motor bell will bash right into the ground. Um, and like I have a tendency to keep arms on until they break, because you know I paid for them. And I'm just being basically cheap. Um, but yeah, arms are inexpensive, and they can save much more expensive motors. And that's why 
I'm actually going to do the right thing for a change here and remove this arm rather than waiting until it inevitably explodes and breaks. So, you know, a win for mental health right now and, and doing things the right way because uh, I'm not being a lazy shitbag. <laughs> <laughs> Proton says the laptop will be old again by the time you get it up and running. I mean, it kind of already is, <laughs> but it's a lot less. I think it's like six years old, but, um, you know, that's half as old as, as this tower, and uh, it's quite a bit faster than, than this tower in terms of the, uh, the processor and the, uh, uh, and the the video card in there. So yeah, this this is going to be the first time I retire an arm for maintenance reasons rather than it being broken in half. And that's pretty cool because that's what I should be doing. That's what all the pro pilots do. Um, yeah. Arms are cheap. Replace them when they are not going to protect your motors anymore. Top tip. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, I mean, I do save... I save arms when they're broken because... Actually, I'm going to throw this arm away. It's not broken, so it's not telling me anything about... Um, like, where... I, I keep them when they're broken just as, like, an example of, like, hey, this arm broke. Look where it broke, yo. Look how it broke. Um, this one's not broken and thus kind of has no value to me. That's weird to say, but very true. What? I want, I'm going to give you broken ones for that. Oh my god! Um, yeah, here, hold on. Uh, um, here is, uh, here's my little setup here for you guys. Um, it's the easiest way for me to get this off. If I... Let me spin this off. Yeah, I can spin this part off and then loosen this. And ah, we just lost our one light. That's yeah, okay. Oh wait, I can swap it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll swap it with the other one. Oh nope, that's tightening it, you dummy. We want to loosen. There we go. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I gotta swap this light with the other one. Only have a plug for one. So I'll let this one charge, and I'll grab this other one, put it on in here, and we've got our nice new light source again. All right, so here's uh, here's my little setup. Um, I've got this nine nine cube Calax. All right, so I'm gonna have to try to talk backwards. Um, so yeah, nine cube Calax, and then I I want to get more of these things. Um, I want to fill up all three of these, maybe even like one or two of the center ones with these guys, just because they hide a lot of the mess. Um, but this is my, my prop one. <laughs> Words elude me. Uh, here's the extra arms that I was just looking for. So that's good. Um, so what I do is in here, since I hoard all the different sizes of prop, um, I have great big Ziploc bags that I organize by um, like two inch props and then for God's sakes, and then two and a half inch and then three inch um, and then I've got uh, just like rando props on the bottom just like totally weirdo random ones um, and then for five inch props I've got a bag of uh, my crazy high pitch uh, long range five inch props and then this orange rampage bag here this is all the freestyle props um, which is nice because like this is the main thing that I would just grab and go if, if for whatever reason my um, my regular bag doesn't have any props left in it I can just grab this entire thing and just run right out the door and I've got all the freestyle props that I need um, other than that within each one of these bags within each one of these big bags um, the the each different type of prop is in a separate little bag. That's what I use all the prop bags that I, I, I save all my prop bags and that's what I use them for so that they're all segmented in here so I can reach in and grab just a thing of 5149s. 
um, or whatever. So yeah, and then it, you know, just disappears because props aren't really cool looking when they're in bags like that. Um, and then for parts, this is this is kind of the mess. But I just throw all the the extra. I, I don't have a lot of replacement parts right now, um, but the ones that I do have, I just toss them in here. Um, the the real actual organization is is happening in my box here. Um, this, the random stuff that I can't really find homes for uh, are up in the top here. Uh, these are all the replate, all the extra uh, T Motor F40 stators and bells that I've got. Um, here's a bag of just the bells, and then like um, stuff that I use a lot, like shrink wrap is up here because this never closes, so this stays open. So like, you know, I don't have to open a drawer; it's just here. Just reach up, grab it, and go. Um, so yeah, kind of like unorganized mess a little bit up here, but a bunch of like my, my scales up here because I grab that a lot. These are all my boxes of, um, of pin headers and, and extra cables and whatnot. Uh, my handy little USB LED light guy. Um, so yeah, that's all up there. And then for the drawers, um, the bottom drawer, I try to keep the majority of the tool random kind of tools in. Um, I love these little boxes. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, they're the ones that are about that big. Uh, they're just great for, for organizing the little stuff. So they got a little home in there. Zip ties back here, scissors, um, nice spot for handled things to kind of cradle some of the uh, E-tapes and then just this area for front to back stuff so that I can just grab it and it doesn't like fall to the bottom. Um, segmenting this drawer in this way has been like really nice. This drawer used to be this everything uh, left to right. All these things would be left to right and when I would close and open the drawer they would roll around and they would just change like locations basically. So whereas now with the stuff going front and back like this every time I open the drawer this is in the same spot, this is in the same spot, this is in the same spot, right? Um, I mean, not exactly, but to some extent. And, and this has been a much better setup for me. Um, this drawer is more like kind of replacement stuff. Um, again, I'm trying to be better about just sort of segmenting this stuff. You know, when I just reusing, you know, the, the, every single little piece of packaging that I get, I try to think about like how to reuse it. Um, Sort of just in life, I, my, my father worked in the alternative energy space in, in a, a plasma fusion reactor growing up, so I was, I was raised on, you know, the principles of just let's try to leave the earth a little bit better than, than what we found it, so that, you know, future generations have a place to live. <laughs> um, so yeah, just trying to like reuse stuff and, and organize these things in some way that makes some sense. These are all my um, titanium screws that I only really use if I'm trying to shave every last gram on a build. Um, this is kind of a rando box. This is replacement lenses. Um, this is race wire and other LED stuff. Uh, this is micro motor uh, C-clips and washers and just extra stuff. Uh, XT60s and XT30s, uh, capacitors, TPU, uh, mainly like battery lead type stuff and antenna routing stuff. Um, Overflow screws that don't fit in these. Like I, I've got so much. I, I hoard all the hardware from when I get uh, fresh motors and flight controllers and whatnot. And then it's all organized. Uh, M3 by five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this goes up to 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Um, and then the standoffs up here: uh, 20 mil, 23 mil, 25 mil, 28 mil, and then 30 mil in here. Um, these are like the rando little spacers and, and gubbins and, and whatnots. And then the other one of these dedicated to M3 is uh, the more random kind of stuff. Uh, M3 nuts, M3 washers. Uh, uh, these are 3mm and 5mm plastic risers. Uh, these are five mil plastic risers. These are four mil plastic risers, um, metal washers and rubber weirdo washers, 
M5 nuts, M5 slim nuts, M2 nylock nuts. Uh, this is very random uh, soft mount stuff. These are all rubber of different heights. I don't really use those too much. Um, all different durometer and color and thickness and height uh, M3 grommets. Uh, these are the Maytech M3 grommets with the brass M2 reducers, which are really nice to have. Um, these are those rubber standoff riser soft mount things. Uh, and then more uh, more spacers for uh, stack mounting. So yeah, that's how I have that. And then um, on the sides, these are uh, Wihas that I use a little bit less frequently. Typically, I don't use any of these for FPV, but I keep them in the box just for other hobbies, other life stuff. Um, this is a box that I made with the RDQ um cable breakout kit thing that i put that immersion rc sticker on upside down that was a weird how the hell did i do that that was strange um so yeah this is just one of those uh kits to make the little uh pin header things these are the the wihas that i use all the time uh this is a micrometer to very precisely measure the thickness of stuff um, i used to use this a lot back when I was into Airsoft, um, because we had washers that were 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, uh, 0.8, and uh, one millimeter. Uh, and all those washers looked exactly the same. So we had to mic, uh, which is the short, short for micrometer. Uh, we had to mic those washers every time to get the gears lined up perfectly and, and running as smoothly and as strongly as possible. Um, this is another little box that I made with all my antenna shit. Uh, a lot of forever tubes up here, an immortal T there. A um, couple extra True RC singularities that these these actually all have homes. I just have to get the builds done, um, and then TPU stuff related to um, holding antennas. So there's that little kit. Um, top right is Exacto knives and the M2 stuff. These are two kits similar to the M3 kits with just all M2 stuff. Um, M2 by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, by 7, by 8, by 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Um, and then just all the same kind of random stuff like the, the nuts, the spacers, the um, soft mount grommets, washers, um, standoffs, all that good stuff. Um, this is a, a taller drawer here. Um, so this is kind of just loaded up with different electrical-ish stuff, some extra solder, extra wires, some shrink wrap, and then just a ton of extra um, wiring in here. Um, all my chemicals so that they only gum up one another, basically. Um, I try to keep all the chemicals in one spot because eventually one of them will let go and spill, um, and I don't want it getting all over wires. It's, it's easy to wipe it off of the the outsides of these things it's hard to wipe it off of individual wires and then this is the complete random drawer um, some files up here on the left which I used to use all the time in airsoft as well um, here's those dental picks that I was mentioning this morning that I don't use but uh, my father lives and dies by this is a little uh, macro lens for your phone kind of cool um, yeah some random stuff these are actually carburetor wrenches um, but they're uh, two, three, four, five millimeter. So they really work well on um, standoffs that have uh, like hex standoffs. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There's an, I have another couple kits up here with, um, this is all Immersion RC uh, plug headers. And then this is all different um, gauges of wire. Each compartment has like like 22 gauge, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, 16 gauge. Um, yeah, no real reason to do that, but <laughs> I, I just try to hoard stuff. And uh, I'm glad that I have been because it's nice like to have extra stuff for giveaways. Um, that is a, a miniature cart filled with broken F40 Pro 2 bells. Um, and then up on the wall, everything up on the wall is broken. Um, and then each one of these broken rigs 
have broken motors on them too. Um, so yeah, between that cart and up here on the wall, there are an awful lot of uh, broken five inch motors and a shockingly small amount of uh, broken micro motors. You know, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I think that's what the kids say, right? So there you go, man. That's uh, that's kind of where I'm at. There's also a caliper floating around here somewhere. Oh, look at that. I just unscrewed that from the base. That was silly. Get in there. Come on. Giving everybody seizures. Yeah, so that's kind of my little organizational system. It, it changes. Um, uh, I, I keep a close eye on what Adam is up to on Tested because he's always got really good ideas for... Uh, just making your workspace work better, uh, more efficient, you know, I basically try my best to cut down on the amount of like, like reaching and, and like repeated, mo like if, if I have to repeat the same motion over and over and over again, and it's all the way up here, is there a way that I can bring it half the distance? Um, which you know, it's easy to go. Oh, well, that's not going to make much of a difference. That's only a, a quarter of a second that you saved. But if you save a quarter of a second a thousand times, well, then it is worth something. So it's just kind of one of those things that I try to stay as open-minded and and like vigilant with as possible, so that uh, I don't just fall into the. Like, oh, it's it's this it's this way because it's this way, right? Like it's this is just the way it is. Like, no, that's that's terrible. If there's a way to make something better, let's make it better. Um not for the sake of making it better, but you know, you never want to just make it better for the sake of doing something, but um yeah, you guys know what I'm getting at. Okay, so it's gonna be this one. This is the uh pretty sure this is the four millimeter arm. It's so hard to tell when they're um, when they're uh, beveled, not beveled. Um, I always forget the word. I don't know why I always forget the word, but I do. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the five mil arm, uh, not beveled. God damn it! You guys know what I mean. I do, Ken. I do. A lot of this stuff, though, like I said, is from airsoft. Like the, this. What's funny is this um, this toolbox was set up for Airsoft from like 12 or 13 years ago, however the hell long it was, um, all the way up until like a couple months ago. I just like left it with this Airsoft setup. I had all replacement Airsoft parts in here. Um, I had all shims up here with the micrometer. Like I just had this very specific setup for working on Airsoft guns and building custom Airsoft guns. Um, that like I'd grown so accustomed to that setup that it was just what I knew and it's what I used. But then I realized like this is ridiculous to have an entire drawer here full of airsoft stuff. So I, I dumped it all out and kind of reorganized it and gave it a little bit more thought. Um, and yeah, it makes a big difference. It, it is it is definitely uh, sped up certain things about like my workflow. Ooh, workflow. <laughs> That's not a super jargon word, but I just I just like to make fun of words that have any chance of being jargon. Just just to be sure, just just to make sure that that uh, there's no chance I'm using them unironically. You know, it's better better safe than sorry. <clears throat> uh, all right, so here's the deal. Great question, Zach. Uh, Zach asks, do chamfered edges actually last longer? Uh, he heard it helped with D lambs. Uh, absolutely not. So when you take material away, go figure. It, it doesn't become stronger. Um, it become what it does become is more impact resistant. So if you uh, picture a a non chamfered that was the word chamfered um, a non well wait I probably have a non chamfered arm on here. I do. I do. I do. So. Uh, if I smack into something with this chamfered arm, chamfered arm that is sharp, right? If I smack into a sharp surface, the, the chamferedness of it is going to flatten out 
that point of impact and it's become it's going to become a little bit bigger of a um uh david kernick i see your comment i'm going to talk about it in a second uh it becomes a little bit of a bigger point of impact and that makes it stronger but i can't remember the last time i broke an arm by hitting it into something sharp i break all my arms by the end of the arm coming down and smacking the ground and creating a gazillion chameleon joules of energy in the arm and then the arm breaks and in that case more material is better um so yeah if if for some reason you find that the edges of your arms have like digs in them from hitting sharp objects all the time then a chamfered arm would technically be better for you but i've yet to have that happen um, i've certainly yet to have it break the arm uh, so i'm a bigger fan of non-chamfered arms but a lot of times you just don't have the choice and um yeah it, it I, I don't i can't possibly think of a way that it would help with d-lambs um i'm trying to think through it right now yeah i, I have no idea how it would help with d-lambs that doesn't make any sense to me um i can totally understand it helping with a, a sharp object hitting it but delaminations happen from just a big amount of energy getting introduced into the arm um, to the point where it bends enough to uh, separate the layers in there. And if you've got more material and more, more resin, right, more things that are trying to keep the, the layers together, well... Isn't that going to be better, right? Like, is, isn't that going to survive a little bit better? I guess the only thing I can think of is maybe the the chamfering, um, it forces the different layers. No, see, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right there because it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I have not found... Where'd it go? I, I've not found the... the chamfered arms to be any less durable though i will i will say that they're i've never had a situation where like and i've run them both <clears throat> pretty extensively on the glides and yeah i i've yet to have a situation where it's like oh i just put on a chamfered arm and it blew up right away and then like i put on a non-chamfered and it's completely fine for six months um it, it's with the glide frames when i slam hard enough where i'm sure that something's broken something's broken um, that has pretty much always been the case with the glide frames and I'm totally fine with that. Like, like if it hits hard, it, I don't care what the frame is. If you hit it hard enough, it's going to blow up period. No questions asked. And I would rather fly a little bit lighter of a frame. You know, this particular frame is beefy enough that it's, yeah, there's never a time where I walk out expecting everything to be fine and uh my shit's on fire in 17 pieces and that's all i ask for and in the in the process of doing that it's the lightest freestyle frame um yeah it's it's lighter than in my opinion any other freestyle frame that has the same strength um there are definitely frames out there that are stronger than this um the reason that I choose not to go with those is that I break motors more than a lot more than arms. So the motors are the weak point. Why would I why would I correct anything other than the weak point, right? Like fix the weak point and then when another weak point pops up, fix that. Uh I don't really see much value. And not to mention that, you know, if the motor is going to be the weak point, I really don't mind if the um if the arm breaks, uh, because that's going to use up some of the energy that would have normally gotten into the motor and probably blown the motor up. And if I can break an arm rather than a motor, that's a huge win for me. Huge, huge, huge win. Um, financially and like just from a repairing standpoint, I would so much rather just swap an arm out than have to swap an entire motor out. I really hate to solder in the field. Um, but using a a, a a hex driver in the field is no problem whatsoever. So, there's that.
and motors are expensive, right? Arms are five, six, seven bucks per, and motors are 10 to 25 bucks per. So, yeah, that's my thought on that. Oh, 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 so there was a good question by David. David, David, David. Where's a good place to get M2 risers? Uh, Pyrodrone and Amazon. Yep, Ken Hill is correct. Uh, what? Tell me exactly what you're looking for, though, David, because um, you said M2 risers. That could kind of make that could mean a bunch of different things, especially because people use the word riser in different ways. So, like, tell me what you're what you're trying to do. Do, do you have like a, a 20 by 20 M2 ESC and flight controller, and you're trying to space them out from one another? And, and, you know, dial in the gap between them. That's what... That's my guess right now. You know what I'm saying? From what you've said so far, that's what M2 risers means to me. But you could technically also mean uh, that you're trying to space rise, let's say, your base plate up above your... Um, I almost forgot to put the screw in. <laughs> Uh, you're trying to raise your top plate up above your bottom plate. Um, I would call those standoffs, but I mean, there's not like a there's not like an FPV dictionary that I know of. Yeah, glue is a really good idea, John. Um, so when when you bang up the end of an arm and it starts to fray out, uh, put a bunch of super glue up in there. Uh, get some wax paper or parchment paper, wrap it up in the in the wax and parchment paper, throw it in a vise. Steele's got a really good video on this um, where he, he covers it perfectly. And he also even puts some uh, graphite in there, which I don't really think does anything, but uh, it, it's probably not going to hurt. Um, but yeah, you basically just want to, and I have not done it on this one yet, but this is a prime example of one that I could... Uh, I could do it on to get a bunch of extra life. Let me manually focus this uh, webcam for a second here. All right, so what you would do is take this, see how it's starting to fray and kind of separate? It loses a lot of its strength like that. So I would take super glue and just squirt it. You want to try to get it as deep in there as, you, as possible. So like, Sometimes you'll even want to kind of pull it apart really gently uh, and just squeeze a bunch of it in there, get it all up out here to hold this piece together, get it all up on this one, and then you clamp it together like that, right? Because you're trying to push it all back together. So you clamp it together, the parchment paper or the wax paper just keeps the super glue from sticking to your vise, and then after like an hour or two you can take it out of the vise and this will be a whole hell of a lot stronger. Uh, I am... I am I don't think I have all the screws in on the arms yet, but that's okay. All right, going back to autofocus. Oh um, did I miss any other uh, questions, guys? Uh, farting makes you heavier. I see. I knew it. Good call, budget FPV. Hell yeah. Oh God. So yeah, if you, if you have, uh, if you're still wrestling, I guess, and you have weigh-ins, just hold in all your farts for a while. They'll help you float. Yeah, I'm missing all the screws in the front arms, but I got the ones in the rears. All right, let's get these front arms back together, and we will move on to the 6S rig. And, um... I don't even remember why. Oh, yeah, I took 1750 kV motors on, and I want to put these uh, 1600s on. So I, I, the the one glide I built to be more of like a cinematic rig, um, so I put it on. My, my normal uh, F46S motor right now is 1600 kV, and when you do the math, that's the same as 2400 kV, which is the T motor that I flew for, like, the better part of a year. Uh so it's really nice to have that exact same uh, top RPM, and, and it, it really, it just, that's the right amount of power for me in the way that I fly. Uh, but I built this cinematic rig, and since I knew it was going to have to haul an extra 40 grams around with the Hero 7, uh, I put the 1750 kV motors in there. 
uh, and they were great, but it's, it's, um, so two things happen. It's, it's not quite similar enough. Like I, I decided that, um, so where I notice it is at the end of dives. At the end of a dive, I want to try to slam down to the ground as close as I possibly can with zero, um, bounce upwards. The, the, the bounce upwards to me is pilot error. Well, I mean, it is, it is pilot error because there's kind of no reason for it. I mean, I'm trying to get down low and stay low until I find the next thing that I want to play around with. Um, the, the thought process being, I want to be as low to the ground as po like if, if I don't have a vertical subject to play with, I want to be as low to the ground as possible. Um, because that gives a better sensation of speed and looks cooler and all the other freestyle things that we think about. Um, so with the 1750 KV motors, I was just bound every, every time I would come out the bottom of a dive, I'd bounce up too much, which me, which means that, you know, essentially I'm giving it the throttle blip that I think is correct and it is too much. And that extra thrust is what's what's forcing it to come up off the ground more than I want it to. So, yeah, I took those off and I had a plan for them. I forget I, there was a there was something I was going to put them on. I forget now. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I just put them away. Um, but yeah, on uh, the other thing that happened is uh, the Hero Sevens just keep breaking. Like so. I, I I had uh, a twenty uh, a four S rig. I had a, a 6S six S sixteen hundred rig, and then I had the six S seventeen fifty rig. And what would happen is I would break the four S rig, or I'd break the six S rig, or I'd break them both. And then um, I would fly this cinematic rig, so it started to get beat up. And then I started breaking the Hero sevens all the time. So I've realized that I just basically what it amounts to is I don't have the self control to have. <laughs> a rig with a Hero 7 mount on it. Um, so I'm just going to put them all onto 1600s and the Hero 7 rig is not, or the Hero 7 TPU is not going to be on a rig. I'm going to have, uh, all three of the rigs will have session mounts on them. So that if I want to fly a Hero 7, I have to take an entire session TPU mount off and put the Hero 7 one on, which is prob knowing myself that's probably enough of a like oh I don't feel like doing that so that I go well and I shouldn't do that because this hero 7 is going to break right like that's that's the point I'm just I'm trying to get my brain to have that realization um which when I'm out flying is hard cuz I just want to fly more and more and more and more and more so that's what I'm working with oh I just found a a little rubber grommet that I lost Probably about a month ago. That's pretty cool. This carpet is so nasty that I, I've i just... I no longer look for things. Like I give it like three seconds of looking for things. And then I just give up. Um, and I just wait it out. And eventually they always... Eventually I will step on them. <laughs> and find them. So, you know. I haven't had to do that with X-Acto blades yet. But I might have to modify that approach with those. Uh, so I think this is good. Let's uh, let's see what these motors sound like on the uh, with no props and freshy fresh. They should be. I mean, they kind of always are. Uh, just like beautifully smooth and wonderful. But um, this is important to do because this becomes your baseline as to how smooth these motors can be. Um, so that if you spin these up after this point and they're any noisier than this, you know that they're starting to wear. Um, so this is actually an important thing to do on all of your builds. Like as soon as you put your fresh motors on, uh, spin them up in the motors tab so that you have in your head, um, I guess if you recorded it, that would be even better, um, with a good quality, like, uh, mic. Uh... But I'm not that. I'm not that into it, and I, I've also done this enough that like I kind of know what to expect. I've spun enough. What I should say is I've spun enough motors up, so that's weird. Why did only some of those come on? It 
It's interesting. It's the same on both, though. It's one, two, three, and then one in the middle. That's weird. Maybe they'll come on with the uh, with more power than that. Try to keep my toes out of the view for you guys. I'm sure it's pretty gross. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's pretty cool. On the startup beeps, it doesn't fire all the LEDs. That's kind of weird. Oh, God, that sounds so good. Oh, fresh motors. All right. Oh, so beautiful. All right, so we have our benchmark for, like, the smoothest that they'll ever sound. Now we're going to see which direction they're spinning. Props out, props out, props out, props out. Look at that. I don't have to do anything. It's just good to go. And now I'm going to go up to 1,300 and just see how much vibration there is in the frame. And there's almost none. That is really clean. The uh, the 1300s are where the majority of the vibes happen. Yeah, wow, very smooth, very, very, very smooth motors. Cool. Good job, T motor. Really, really, really nice set of well balanced motors. Ugh. Like I said, they they typically all are, but uh, I don't know. I, I feel like that was a little bit smoother than normal. And of course, they're a little bit warm um, because they have no airflow. They have no prop um, pushing air over them. Uh, you know, for a motor manufacturer, it makes sense for them to manufacture them ag so aggressive that when they're in their normal use, right, with props on, um, they they don't get hot. Um, they'd be leaving a lot of performance on the table if they made motors that would stay cool when we're doing this shit and it would kind of be useless, right? Because we don't do this often. Uh, so yeah, very cool. Nice set of motors. Let's, uh, let's put everything on it and we'll see what it weighs. Uh, because I think it's going to be, for me, like for what I'm used to, I think it's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, because these cool. motors are quite a bit heavier than the uh, 2306s. So uh, that makes me have to choose what props I'm going to run on these. Uh, Ken Hill emailed Armaton to see if they were ever going to offer a F7 flight controller for the Bind and Fly Marmot, and they said no. Uh, it's like they want $410 for it with a s with SEC booty motors. <laughs> 4S only and F4. I told them two to get two 2020. That's weird. I don't know why they would want to do that. Um, I've never really been a huge fan of Armaten. The, the, the way that they design those those Marmot and uh, Chameleon, and, and I don't like the way that they design those arms. I don't like the way they connect the arms. I know that the lifetime warranty is great and all, but I would rather have a frame that um, has less vibrations, uh, less harmonics, and doesn't have a lifetime warranty. Uh, totally just my personal preference, but yeah. Not a fan. Oh, that's a dead fly. How did he get into my little pile of junk? Did he just die there? Uh, John Dyson, do you, uh, do you notice a change in a new motor after a first flight, uh, set of flights? Uh, I do. Uh, but that's because I smash them into concrete and destroy them. <laughs> uh, otherwise, no, I don't notice a difference. Uh, there was a guy who managed to wear a set of these motors out, but I think he put like four or 500 um, batteries through them, if not more. Uh, Proton to go, what's the cost of the funny startup beep variations, like double sounds on one motor? Uh, I'm sure you're also talking about the delays and shit. Uh, I don't know. I've asked Joshua. I don't get the feeling that he knows. Um, I've asked a bunch of people, actually, and uh, nobody seems to have a really good answer. <laughs> there have been a couple like, oh, it could be because of this, but as soon as the word could comes out, I, I'm I'm over it. I'm, uh, I'm tuned out. So, yeah, I don't know. I used to think it, um, it used to seem like it correlated with ESCs starting to die, and... I haven't totally ruled that out, but I don't know. I've had ESCs die that aren't doing that. 
Um, and I've had ESCs die that are doing that. Is this one doing it, out of curiosity? Because I haven't really paid much attention lately. Ever since I moved to these AK, AK, um, uh, Akon AK32 ESCs, I haven't really had to think about ESCs because these are just so good and bulletproof. Yeah, see, these are all firing at the same time, which is interesting because um, if any of these Akon ESCs were going to do it, it would be this one because I've been running this one for the past uh, week or so on 6S with 2400 kV motors. <laughs> um, not like exclusively, but like every flight session I've been doing five 4S batteries and then between one and six 6S batteries. A little bit of a throttle curve most of the time, um, but yeah, uh, this ESC has seen more electrical abuse than any of the other ones recently, and it just has been completely fine. Like, it's it's just, it laughs and, and asks for more. Uh, let's get some foamies on here, let's get some zip ties on here, and some props and it will be good to go. So what do I need, two extra little foam jib jabs? Yeah, two of those guys. Uh, let's get some zip ties out here. Just these two. Uh, let's pick some, do I have any? Yeah, I do. I have some prop nuts float around over here. All right, so we got some prop nut action, and then I th think I want to run a lowish pitch. You know what? No, I'm going to run the, the 5143s on these um, because these are the props that I know the best. And, uh, yeah, I when I'm doing testing, I try to remove as many variables as possible so that I can... Um, so that my review of the, of the actual item is as, uh, controlled as possible and as accurate as possible. So I'm going to use the props that I'm most familiar with so that I can really just, uh, try to focus on the performance of the motor. Makes sense. That was supposed to be a question. Makes sense? <laughs> All right, cool. Got that going. I'm also just thrilled to have 5143s again. I ran out a while ago, um, and I've had a whole bunch of props that were given to me by um, Joshua Bardwell that he didn't want anymore, and um, I think that was it. I, I, I got some other wacky props that I've been having some fun with. Um, I also kind of want to change this out. Although, let's see, is it the time? Oh, no, this is the good one. Okay, so this is the 6S compatible one. Cool. I will leave that alone. Uh, all right. Um, so for the record, I put one of Tiny's LEDs, a little $2 super cheapo ones down here. Um, it's wired directly up to VBAT, and this LED has been, like, such a lifesaver. Um... I crashed this in a little freshwater pond at one point, and it was upside down. And I swear to you, if it didn't have this on it, I wouldn't have seen it. Uh, it was upside down. The pond was dark. It was getting dark out. And without this, like none of the LED or none of the uh, flight controller lights were visible. Um, so it was just black on black. And I would have had a real hard time finding this thing. Um, but instead, this was just blasting away. Uh, red LED goodness and uh, after like 30 seconds I saw the red LED in the one little pond and knew that's where it was and went and grabbed it and all was well so yeah heavily uh, uh, recommend running a simple little LED down here I just have it on little 30 gauge wires they don't get hot um, and it's just loops right up through the hole right onto the uh, to the ESC battery pads um, the other thing that's super nice about this is that when you're nose down flying, this is bright as shit to anybody behind you trying to follow you, and it makes you so much easier for them to find. And then you get cool follow footage, which is awesome. So do it. Get you some tiny LEDs love and throw in the, uh, in the message note that CRDFPV sent you. 
and maybe he'll send us even more stuff when the insane amount of stuff that he already sent has run out. Huge, huge, huge shout out to him. Um, I, I, I still kind of can't believe he sent so much nice stuff for for the giveaways. All right. Uh, no, let me do this the right way. I always try to get a little... The, these, these ones from Amazon don't stick all that well, um, so I just try to do anything I possibly can to, to help out. And adhesives love heat, so I just get a little bit of heat in it before I stick it on there, and that seems to make a little bit of a difference. That's another trick that I stole from Steel, actually. It also helps if you get it right on the first shot. So, you know, that's out the window. All right, so that's I put it as close in as possible, and then what I do is hit the zip tie on it to hold the, um, to hold the, uh, you guys can't see it, to hold the race wire down. Um, and these race wires have this nice little area here where they put, um, where he staggered some pads for you. So you can either use the staggered pads or you can use the end pads. But this little area is perfect for the zip tie to sit on and just hold this guy down a little bit. This way, um, you don't have to have, it, it reduces the need to have one zip tie here holding the, um, so if you put the, if you put these foamy guys on only with their little adhesive, they come right off. Like I, I, the, I'll lose one of these before the first day of flying. Whereas with a, with a zip tie holding it down, like you see up here, um, they'll last a long, long time. And you can even skid on the damn things. Um, when you have them zip tied on, so that's that's the best uh, setup that I've found is to put them on on the inside of the arm here, and then use one zip tie to hold the the race wire down and to hold that guy on. It's just like a nice clean setup, um, and I also always put this nubbly guy on the opposite side of the prop rotation. So I'm props out, so they rotate like this. So if there's a prop strike, prop strike is going to hit on this side. So I want to put the, the big nubbly bastard on the opposite side, um, just as one less thing for the prop to hang up on um, if there is a, a, a prop strike situation. Because props getting stuck and then you going into turtle mode and sending voltage to that corner uh, causes a huge spike in amps, and it can really... Uh, it's one of the easiest ways to hurt and or blow up um, an ESC. So yeah, I just zip that guy down, kind of rotate it around until it's happy. And don't make them too tight. Um, as time goes on, you're going you're gonna to have to tighten these a little bit. But uh, yeah, see it sits right in that little slot there. Hold the race light on. Um, also, you don't want to crank them too tight because you don't want to drive the bottom of the uh, the race wire into the carbon because it's not fully like isolated. I put the piece of VHB down there so it is isolated and they do have a coating on it to isolate it but um, yeah there's just no reason to to crank on this particular zip tie. It, it doesn't really help. Um, and if you don't crank on it super hard as this foamy kind of uh, uh, loses its foaminess you can just push and, and add a little bit of tightness every so often and, and just gradually keep kind of tightening it up, which works really, really well. So yeah, there's that. Let's do the other corner, throw some props on, get a weight, and move on to the next. Ugh. Get the arm clean. Uh, Proton to go uses self-melting rubber tape. That's pretty cool. What is is it self melting? As in, like the the temperature of your hands are enough to uh, melt it. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, that that right, and that that was the other reason I started using these zip ties like this is so that the because uh, I was using shrink wrap and then I was using electric tape, um, and yeah, those are not. Uh, why run race race wires if you're or race LEDs if you're gonna cover them up with a shit show? <laughs> C 
cover him up with a schlibby schlob. And be careful with these things. They don't, like, see it getting white. Like, it'll lift. The adhesive will lift up if you put too much heat on it. So you got to be kind of gentle. Just a little heat goes a long way. All right, got that one on there. You didn't miss much. I know I did that off camera, but nothing super exciting. All right. And again, we're going to put the big guy on the back so that it hopefully doesn't get prop stricken. And this one is not quite as even, but we're gonna be all right. It's okay to have a little bit of an angle here. It'll, it'll, uh, once it, I'm actually gonna pull this one a little bit harder so that it digs into the, um, so that it digs into the foam and starts to leave a nice groove. And uh, I've found that to work totally fine. All right, I'm just gonna rotate it until it finds a little happy place and it looks like it's there. A little bit tighter, see how it's, it's just pulling on it a little bit harder. That's just because it's, uh, it's gonna be at that weirdo kind of angle. Because I just left these a little bit too long. I should have cut these a little bit shorter, but that's okay. This is a temporary setup. All right, so there we go. Oh, you stretch it. Ah, that's pretty cool. It must have the uh, the two binary sticky components in it. And then when you stretch it, they, uh, they touch each other. That's pretty slick. Pretty slick. All right. Smoke on front. Because this frame does have ever so slightly a little tiny bit of prop in view just in the corners. Uh, so the gray props make that completely disappear. And red in the back because style, man. Because style. Form over function is my motto. As long as it looks good, who cares how it performs? <laughs> Oh, people that actually think like that make me laugh. But, to each his or her own. Anybody get some of that uh, Tweet FPV grip yet? Oh, wow. they uh, So they shortened up the... I had a feeling that people were going to start doing this. They've, uh, they've shortened up the, the shaft because a lot of the props are now... Uh, using the thinner uh, hub. So I actually really like that. I really like that they shorten the shaft. I It looks like it's hitting the nylon, but it's, it's kind of hard to tell. I think I'm just going to chance it. And if it throws a prop, that's kind of fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to crank them a little bit harder than usual. And we'll see how it does. If it throws one of them, I have... Uh, I have backups. I hope that it is grabbing the nylon because if it's not, then I'll have to use those stupid ass skinny M5 nuts and man, they suck. I hate those. All right, let's see what it be weighing. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna put this in like my all up flight configuration which is, if I can find a way for it to properly sit on this damn scale, I have to use this. All right, that's better. Okay, good. So let's get this in here, and let me grab one of my 6S 1050s. Hey! Because I always forget if they're... 160 or 170 grams. Plus, it's always nice to 
look at the actual number. Ooh, that's way worse than I thought. Holy hell. 640 grams. Good God. Yeah, that's too much. That's too much for this frame, in my opinion. Um, this frame at like 600, 610 grams uh, holds up just fine. But at 640, it's going to start really suffering in terms of durability. Wow, what a difference those motors made. Holy cow. Um, geez. I knew these motors were heavy, but I guess it makes sense. They're almost 10 grams heavier per than uh, what I'm used to. So that uh, does compute. Interesting. Wait. Wait a second. What did I say? It's 640, right? No. What was it? When I took that off, it said... 460. I thought it said 660. I know these batteries aren't 200 grams. 640. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Just making sure I'm not losing my mind. 1... Okay, so they are 170. Alright. Thought so. God, I can't... I, I, I really am hoping that somebody makes a affordable... 6s that only weighs 160 that's really what i'm shooting for that extra 10 grams really bugs the shit out of me all right so there we go there's the uh test rig for this afternoon that'll be cool that'll be fun put a few through it record my thoughts chop it all together and send it to vivian at uh, t-motor see how she likes it and then maybe they'll send me some, uh, they, at the time that they were sending these, they didn't have any of the 2306s in stock. Um, so they didn't send me those. But I'm hoping that if she likes the uh, review, she'll send a set of those really fancy looking. Um, they have them in silver and gold with all the crazy little angles on them. Um, I thought that would be super cool <clears throat> to do a set of those uh, in 2306 to see how they compare to um, their older motors. All right, where is, here it is. Cool, so on this guy, we're going with a little bit of a purple and blue thing, which should be cool. And yeah, we're going from 1750s to 1600s, which will match it up. I also have this, just for out of sheer curiosity, I put this uh, CCD camera on it, because um, I've always kind of been interested in CCD versus CMOS, but I've always run CMOS cameras because the the Runcam Swift, the micro, the little tiny one. Th this is a micro, but it's it's got the bigger M12 lens. Um, the smaller lens Runcam Swifts for me um, had horrible barrel distortion and like fisheye, and uh, I had a really hard time with them. I was just never comfortable flying them. So yeah, that's all I think about that. And I've flown this a little bit, and I very quickly forget that I'm supposed to be paying attention to the, <laughs> the camera, um, and I just start flying, which on one hand is a good thing. It means that CCD isn't bad, but I uh, eventually I'll have the, the wherewithal to... Um, actually like pay attention just notice essentially that uh it looks differently okay so i also need to replace the race wires on this one but i think that's what i have these for yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i put these aside um and i i pretend them and on these i'm using the uh the little covers the cool little covers, which like I'm really tempted to take off now, now that I know that they're a half a gram each, but, um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I don't know. Half a gram. I mean, it's in here. It's not all the way at the end of the arm, but yeah, I'm going to take them off. They're too heavy. Sorry. Two extra grams on the arms is not 
it, it's just not worth it. Like, like I'll spend the extra dollar to replace this um, for the performance advantage. Uh, and weight at the end of the arms is a big deal. It's it's a way bigger deal than than people give it credit for, uh, in my opinion. Opinion. Because um, every single motion of the quad has to move that weight at the end of the arms significantly. Um, you know you can prove this to yourself. Take one of your rigs. Take one of your rigs and grab it in the in the center here like this and go like this to simulate yaw and pay attention to like how much muscle you have to put into it to change directions like this and then do this with the GoPro in it too and then do like this on the pitch axis actually grab it grab it sideways like this so you're just rotating it and rotate it on the pitch axis and same deal like pay attention to how much energy it takes to move it and then do the same thing on the roll axis. Grab it from back here on the roll axis. And it'll give you a really good feel for um, how your your pitch roll and yaw pids should be relating to one another, right? Because, you know, the spoiler here is going to be that when you do this, you're going to be like, wow, that's easy. And then when you do this, you're going to be like, oh my god, that's hard. Mainly because of the GoPro. Um, but then when you do this... The, the most interesting thing to me is doing this with yaw and doing this with roll um, because there's a definite difference and when you feel the difference you're gonna be like oh wow okay like it's there's there's a lot more not a lot there there's definitely more resistance on the yaw rotation um, and also keep in mind that the yaw is where the um, there's just less authority on the yaw axis because it depends on the the gyro effect of the motors rather than just two motors pushing a bunch of thrust down and flipping the thing around so calling a kibosh on those let's solder up some of these race wires and get a move on all right so that wire's starting to get a little mangled uh yeah i'm gonna swap that out I'm gonna swap that out. That out. All right, let's see here. How long does this guy need to be? All right. This fella. Where'd my solder go? There's some. I had two big things earlier where they, they just vanished. Find it in like a week. Alright, let's tin this fella and then we'll figure out how long it needs to be and then we will get these race wires on here. I'm being very impatient and doing this before it has time to heat up, but it's just tinning, so it's going to be all right. Cool. So I'm replacing this one, and that means it needs to be this long. All right. And we'll strip the other side of this a little bit longer. For the pads on the ESC. Very gentle. All right, I'm gonna need more solder than this. Um, oh, that's the other thing I didn't show you guys. I keep my solder up, like basically on the other side of this piece, and then I just run it at an angle here, so I can just pull it out, and I just use the soldering iron to cut it, and away we go. And I've got my nice long piece of solder that I then wrap around my flux pen to put a nice coil in it and then it'll stand up on the desk like so get your nice little neat and tidy coil in it you can also just do this around your finger if you're not a crazy person like me 
And then there you go, look at that. It stands up on your desk, and then when you need it, it's a nice little handle for you. Another trick from Papa Ciotti. That dude knows what's up. He knows all the fun tricks and... I guess it's just tricks. <laughs> I couldn't think of another word. <laughs> I almost said traps, and I was like, wait, what? I don't know traps. Alright, pushing solder through the strands of the wire, and we're good to go. So there we go. Replacement wire, because this uh, silicone is starting to come off here. And what I don't want for it to happen is for it to come all the way off and for this to touch the solder joint next to it. I solder them in a way that it prevents that from happening, but it, there's just no reason to, to not um, do this real quick. And I was rocking the iron back and forth just now. That's not good to do, but you can get away with it before the heat is in it. Um, you really don't want to do it once there's heat in there because that can loosen up the adhesive below the pad. Um, the reason that I do it is to try to spread the heat around a little bit, but as soon as it starts to flow, um, you got to stop doing that. And this soldering iron is turned all the way up, but I think the tip is just kind of dirty. This soldering iron is on its last legs, I think. Uh, it's not on its last legs, it's just that... Um, it would be nice to have one with a little bit more grunt so that when I'm doing things sloppily and quickly like this that it's not such a pain in the ass. There we go, that's better. Clean tip does wonders. There it is. Cool. So now we'll take our replacement. Put it at roughly the same angle because that's the angle I have really good luck with. And get it up in there. And now I'm going to burn my fingers. But the pain is worth it. Let it cool, let it cool, let it cool. All right. Good to go. What happened to the chat? You guys still in there? What, you guys fall asleep on me? Come on, what the fuck? <laughs> Sons of bitches, talk, speak. <laughs> uh, berate my uh, my viewers into <laughs> into being active. Uh, uh, all right. First person to say something gets a prize. I probably pulled that switcheroo on you guys too many times, though. You know it's bullshit by now. Hey, Charlotte, thanks for messaging me on Facebook an hour ago to tell me that uh, there's no audio on the stream. <laughs> sure wish I'd been looking. All right, let's clean these up a little bit. This arm is actually technically broken, but it's only the top, uh, the top layer, so I'm going to let it roll. The top layers don't provide much strength. Um, they do provide a little bit of strength in the twisting direction, um, but not much. They're mainly just, um, cosmetic. So I feel okay, um, leaving this one alone. Yeah, I'll clean them all at once. Try to assembly line this itch. Sulfur FPV is in the house. How you doing, man? Where are you from? What time is it where you are? What'd you have for lunch? Um, can't think of anything else to ask. Did you hear me? Uh, are, are you a... Uh, was, was that hello a byproduct of my browbeating you into chatting or did you just join? <laughs> Roscoe Sticks in the house. How are you, man? Hopefully better than yesterday. I know you're feeling a little... Oh, that's gross. You're feeling a little down yesterday. Hopefully today's a little bit better. I was actually kind of with you yesterday. I was not feeling great. But uh, woke up early this morning to go to phase one of a three-part, um, like, kind of full-service psychological test that I'm going to have done. 
to figure out what the fuck is wrong with me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Kristen did hers yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, she did phase two yesterday. And uh, was telling me all about it. And I was just getting more and more excited the more she told me. So I can't wait, man. I love um, something that I've kind of grown into in my 30s. Uh, Roscoe, I th think I did. Um, I think I saw it pop up. I didn't have a chance to... I only check my emails every couple days, um, but when they pop up, I at least look at the uh, the subject line. Uh, yep, there it is. Got it. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll give that a read probably tonight. I'll have some time tonight. Um, any of you guys know like what's the deal with Discord and streaming? Like, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't want to. Get the audio chat going in Discord. Well, I guess I could. I guess I could let the audio chat run. Um, but it would be impossible for me to kind of manage it. So I guess it would kind of turn into a shit show. I know somebody previously said, like, it's it's your guy's way of, uh, of sharing images, which is, a, which is a really good thing. And I really need to be better about um, keeping Discord open. Well, I mean, just opening it in the first place would be a big first step. But, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of, like, streamer stuff built into Discord. And, I don't know, I don't necessarily understand what it's there for. And I'm also trying to figure out how to, um... What's up, David? How are you? Uh... What's, uh, what do you got going on the tactic, Roscoe? Just, like, shit with the virus or other stuff or life in general? FPV stuff? APV stuff? LTV stuff? Element OP stuff? All right, I'll stop. I like to put these guys right around here on the arm. Um, give a little bit of a gap between the uh, the base plate so that the wires don't like smash right into the base plate um, but I try to get them as, as far out as possible so that if the prop strike does happen it happens on this guy um, so this is kind of the best spot that I've found for them uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go put some I'm gonna go wet my uh, soldering sponge <laughs> Nothing like a nice wet sponge. <laughs> oh, look at that. Big wet bastard. Uh, oh, well, that's great. That's That sucks, dude. God damn. What in the world? <laughs> the sulfur, that's funny. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What are, you, what are you watching on your phone? Listening on your phone? Do a barrel roll. Blah. Not going to be that guy. Promised myself I wouldn't be that guy. Oh, the wet sponge. Oh, I'm so lazy to walk over to the sink and wet the sponge, but my God, is it nice. I really need to be less lazy about that because it, it's also a lot... Uh, less hard on the tip. My, when my dad sees me using the uh, the the shaved Brillo, or whatever the hell you want to call it, pad thing, he's like, "Dude, what are you doing? Like, why? Why are you using that? Use the goddamn sponge, lunatic! It works better and it's easier on the tip." But laziness, guys, laziness. I mean, I just bridged that right away. I mean, just like, like almost like I tried to do it. It was almost like I was trying to bridge that one. 
try to finagle this. I'm going to push it over to the side into the iron. And in theory, oh, that totally worked. That worked really well to um, reduce how much that wire was fanned out. I can't believe how well that worked, actually. All right, let me give you guys a little bit more love. A little bit more visual love. Uh, one of the other little tips here, grab the wire with just the tip of the uh, of the tweezers so that you can really push the wire down into the pad. Um, if you grab it like halfway down the tweezers, the tips of the tweezers will hit the carbon and you won't be able to get it really flat. Um, and yeah, getting it flat does make a difference. Alright, so we got a situation. These two guys are getting a little too close for comfort. Let's take them off and we're just going to do it all over again. So I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to de-fanify it. I'm just going to push it in on itself. Come over here on the other side. Push that one in. Alright, so now it's a lot skinnier. And... I'm actually going to retin this one because it doesn't have quite enough solder on it, and I didn't notice. So let's get that off of there. Let's get some more solder on it, and looks like I need we need to retin the net, the last one here as well. So this, I'm glad I saw that. Come on, I just just let me half-ass this. Come on. It's just tinning. Just, just work. Come on, now. There you go. Thank you. All right, plenty of solder on that now. Let's do this one here as well. I think I want to defan this one out a little bit too. It looks like it got all flattened. Although that actually did the trick. Just adding that little bit of solder to it did the trick. <laughs> nice, Roscoe. That's, uh, I've never heard that before. That's super cool. I'm listening. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that. I, I, um, so I took a psychology class when I was at university and I really liked it. Uh, I took it my junior year, so like the thought of pursuing it wasn't even, I mean, it wasn't even a thought really. But I wish that I had. I, I, I wish that um, I'd had the, the motivation, to be honest, and the money back then um, to have pursued that because like as I've gone through therapy as a patient, um... I just really enjoy it. Like, I just, I think that the human mind is unbelievably fascinating. And I also find it fascinating how little that we really know about it. Well, I should say how, how, how much we don't know. That's because we do know a lot. Um, but there's also, an, there's an awful lot that we don't know about it. And, uh, yeah, I just think it would be, I, I just, I, I, wish that I had the work ethic um, to have pursued it because I think I would have really enjoyed it as a career um, and you make good money so that helps I would love to have a job making good money again <clears throat> David Kernica prefers the Brillo uh, do you prefer a point uh, John Dyson asked you for a point iron tip than a small chisel tip. Uh, so I prefer a chisel tip for sure. Uh, the way that my father explained it to me is the... Um, so I'll use like drastic, drastic examples here. Um, and this isn't even really a chisel tip, so I, I shouldn't use this one. But uh, I don't think I have one that you can even tell. Well, only the one that's on it. Um, so the name of the game is getting heat onto the joint as quickly as possible uh, so that you don't heat up the adhesive below the pad because uh, that weakens it. And one of the uh, ways to do that is with surface area. The more surface area 
on the tip of the iron that you can get touching the solder and or joint, um, the quicker it's going to heat it up. And so the flat side of the chisel tips is all that I use. Um, the chisel, chisel tips are great because they do have the, the front or the, the very end of it is pretty sharp and kind of round and both sides are round as well. So it, it kind of, it can do everything that the round tip can um, and then some. Um, and by and then some, it means I can lay this thing down flat and get the flat part of this chisel tip flat against the, the, um, the wire. And, you know, the wire is already round, right? So you've got like, if you're putting round on round, it's only got this tiny little spot of contact. Whereas if, if you take something with a flat spot and you put it against the round, you've got like more than double the contact area. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have unfortunately had that experience once or twice with, uh, therapists that I chose not to go back to. Um, but I have also found therapists that I've stayed with who are unbelievably brilliant. Um, and it's, yeah, I love it. I, I really do. I really, really love spending time, if nothing else, spending time with people that are that brilliant and talking to them about, and, and, you know, not talking to them about the weather, talking to them about things that, that matter. Um, real life things, heavy, real conversations. I have no patience or want to engage in small talk, um, which is one of the reasons I have a, a hard time in, like, social settings like bars and parties and shit like that. Like, I just, I don't want to talk to you about meaningless stuff. Um, I want to talk about specific stuff and, and, um, politics and, and worldviews and, uh, you know what I mean? Real stuff, stuff that matters, right? Stuff that like you'll remember about somebody. Like if I sit here and talk to you about what you did last week or what the fucking weather is or what you're doing for the, uh, about the virus. I'm never going to remember that. Right. And like, that's not going to leave any lasting impression. And like, I don't know, what's the point? Um, our memories are sort of everything. So anything I can do to, uh, make a more impactful memory with someone I'm going to do, but Hey, that's just my philosophy on life and relationships. Um, and because of that fact, I don't have many friends, and I never have. Um, I've always just had like a, a very small number, a lot of times just one uh, or two of friends, but they're friends that I have real conversations or hobbies or all the above with. And that's what matters to me. And if you don't like it, you can suck it. <laughs> All right, let's get this one here. And I'm going to move this one down ever so slightly just so that it clears the, uh, the spot where the carbon is a little bit broken. A little bit more light. Uh, Roscoe, it is a lifelong journey I've found. Um, you you will no, and and you will probably not find one person that can do that um you will uh my experience has been that i will kind of plateau with a therapist and kind of get to the end of their um not their abilities but just their relationship with me um and they have a hell of a hard job right like they have to try to understand your entire life um, to find all these problems. So yeah, uh, you have to keep trying though. I, I, Kristen and I both have had more bad therapists than good. Um, and, and you can't just don't like ignore it. Like if, if you get a bad vibe, if, if it's, if you think it's not working out, just it's, believe me, they get it. Like it's don't, don't feel like you're, you're hurting their feelings or anything. Um, 
Judy just moved. That's true. Yeah, Kristen said it. Kristen just said she had a therapist who just moved away on her. Didn't tell me or anything. Didn't tell her anything. That's how bad of a patient she is. Hi-oh! Yeah, I get that. I have abandonment issues. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, you, you have to keep trying. Um, it is it is so worth it. I know it's hard, um, but it really is worth it when you find the right one. I've talked to people who've been to like four or five therapists, and they're just like, I'm never doing that again. It's, it's just a waste of time. And I'm like, oh, that's so heartbreaking. Like, please just believe me like you, you have to go um the other thing though i think that people don't sort of realize is that um you're not going to go to a couple sessions and, and feel better more than likely um it's a big thing like you don't don't really expect to get anything out of it for i mean a minimum a month um and like you get out of it what you put into it too like when they give you homework you have to do it i know you don't want to do it um, I have homework right now that I don't want to do, but I am going to do it because it can potentially make my life better and that's worth it. Um, but you do have to work. Like it's, it's when I, early on in therapy, I thought I could just show up and, and he would make me feel better. And, and he did cause he was brilliant. Um, but I didn't get nearly as much out of it as I do when I bring it home and think about it and, um, write about it. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons I've got that thread on FPV therapy. Um, today in, in talk therapy, I learned, um, that, that thread is kind of for you guys, but if I'm honest, it's more for me. Um, so that every single time I leave, uh, the office, I have a, a responsibility in that thread. So I sit there in that parking lot and I do not drive away until I have added a post to that thread. Um, and it keeps me honest. It keeps me thinking about it. And it it's something that I can look at um, as a reminder. Like if I have a rough week and I don't um, have it in me, which is fine. It's okay. It's totally fine to have a rough week and not do your homework. I didn't, I went today and I didn't have my homework done, but I had a crazy week. Um, and that's okay. It, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, but if you skip it the next week and you skip it the next week and then you just don't do it, it's, it's on you. Um, they can only do so much. And now that I've kind of realized that, uh, for sure, the more work I put into it, the more I get out of it. The, the more times during the week I can remember to ground myself um and i can remember to not catastrophize stuff and and all these things that they're teaching me um the more i do them the easier they become and that's the only way to get to 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 get any semblance of a of like a cure to this shit right like it's this we're we're stuck in this pattern you know we our brain keeps walking the same path in the snow to the mailbox every day and our brains are at a point right now where that path is really well worn and um it's hard to break that it's it's very difficult to break that the the mind is very pattern based like we've developed as an organism to be very very pattern based um because that helps with hunting and and um um, reproducing is the word that I couldn't find. And yeah, we're, we're just very pattern based creatures and breaking out of that pattern is literally against the way that we're hard coded. So it's very difficult. Um, I do not envy the job of a psychiatrist. It seems like a very difficult job. Um, but yeah, you got to work it, man. You, you got to go in there and work it. And, and I'm not saying that you're not, I, I have, I have no idea. But uh, I'm just trying to think of different things that might help you get a better experience out of it. What's up, woman? I've been in talk therapy now for 14 years. <laughs> Not constant, though, right? You've had no. big breaks, right? Constant. No. The every week? The, like, well, like, Not maybe like six months have gone lapsed, but like every place we have lived, every I've had a therapist. Yeah, that's true. So it's been 14 years. I just did the math. There you guys go. 14 years worth of work. And this motherfucker's still crazy as shit. You should see her. Oh, God. 
it's terrible. <laughs> Much less crazy, though. My thing, God. The thing that I've learned is that, like, at every point in my life when I'm finding a new therapist, I find them for a different reason to, like, make myself, you know, but, like, you can kind yeah. of, I think, attest to that. Like, this therapy time around is very different for me than it was in the past, you know? Yeah. That's the only way that I can grow with them, too. You guys can hear this, right? I don't doubt that, Roscoe. I really don't that that you work hard. Um, I really think you just haven't found the right person. And uh, I know it's a pain in the ass. And you know what's the big pain in the ass for me is that um, uh, most healthcare makes it really difficult to find somebody that takes your uh, your coverage and um, to the point where when we were in Charleston. Uh, Kristen had to, uh, the only therapist she could find that was half decent didn't take insurance at all, right? Or just didn't take our insurance? Yeah, there was a while, like, I had to pay $130 a session a week. in pocket. Yeah. yeah. So I would only, I could only afford to go sometimes once a month. And, like, we didn't have that money. No. Like, I we would, didn't have that money once a month. I would do it because but, I knew I had to do it. Yeah, like, if nothing else, our brain has to be working. Like, like I, I will forego hobbies, like anything, um, other than, you know, food and shit, but you know what I'm saying? Like it, you have to, um, I've learned that the way that my brain works, I have to make it a priority. Um, if I don't make it a priority, it becomes very easy to just skip it and not do it. And that's when shit gets bad. Um, so I've, I've just learned that it, it has to be. Yeah, it, it just has to be a thing that I do no matter what. Um, I've had much bigger breaks than Kristen has in between um, because I tend to be pretty good at like learning a ton in therapy and then being able to actually put it into practice. Uh, but as I get older, that gets a lot harder, unfortunately. Um, which is another thing working against you, Roscoe. Every single day that goes by, it, you're... Um, you know, that path in the snow gets a little bit deeper and it just gets a little bit harder to, uh, yeah, be less crazy. But, uh, yeah, man, keep looking. You'll, you'll find somebody. I, I, I promise you, you will. It's, I know it's, I know it sucks and it's bleak, but, um, you just have to do it. That's very true. If if you've been finding all females, try a guy or that. vice versa. I didn't like a guy therapist. I preferred a female and it just, yeah, it clicked for me. Ah, okay, Roscoe. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, here's the other thing that, that I was thinking of um, is that you also have to, and again, not saying that you don't, but uh, you have to trust them, like, kind of from the first minute you walk in the door, um, and you just can't hold back, like, you can't not tell them stuff, you can't, uh, lie about shit, you, you the, you just have to trust them 100%, and the, the deepest, darkest shit, you have to tell them, you know, like, I find it weird telling them that I'm, that I have suicidal shit, but... I have to. I, I have to tell them everything in order for them to understand the full picture to be able to actually help. Um, and recently I'm learning that I also have to um, think back about shit. Like my, my, I don't, for whatever reason, have many memories of when I was um, growing up, um, possibly because I was bullied and, and blocked them out. Uh, but I have to force myself to think about them to try to figure out that shit for my youth because it, it makes a difference. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, I don't know. It's, it's not just you, man. That, that's, that's one of the things I really want you to understand though. It, it's, it is not just you. Um, I have heard that from a lot of people and a lot of people just give up. And I probably would, too, if, if I had a whole bunch of therapists in a row that were no good. Um, but you got to just trust me on this one. Um, you got to keep at it. 
because it ain't going to get any easier, right? Like, like I'm not going to get any less crazy. <laughs> yeah, I thought I felt him thundering on the floor. Uh, sulfur, best therapist I've found are the ones I can connect with and open up and the ones that uh, are clinical I don't like. Interesting, okay. Uh, John Dyson has opened up more to therapists than anyone else. Um, I can't say the same, uh, the same amount. I, I, I try to be an open book in general, um, but I can't say that like there's stuff that I've told my therapist that I haven't told my wife. Uh, and or strangers on the internet, to be totally honest. Like, I, I really do um, try on the streams to be just completely transparent. Um, because I don't think anybody else really does that. <laughs> and maybe that's, maybe that's one reason why you guys actually stay around. Uh, although I shouldn't say that. That is uh, negative self-talk. And I use it as funnies and I will continue to do that but um, I'm trying to get better about vocalizing that part of it because it's interesting right so the 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 repetition and the self-talk stuff um, I never really believed in like you know saying a hundred times in the mirror to myself you're awesome or, or you're not garbage or whatever um, I've tried it. I've tried the repetition stuff, uh, the positive repetition stuff, and it's never really worked. Uh, the podcast, uh, The Hilarious World of Depression, there was a comedian on there <clears throat> who said something that completely opened my eyes, which was that um, he had the same experience, and what he realized at one point was that uh, when he's in a, a depressive downturn, he repeats over and over to himself that he's garbage and that he's shit and he's worthless. And that seems to work pretty damn well in convincing himself by repeating it over and over again that he is garbage and he is worthless when he's in those, when he's in that bad place. And so, yeah, right? Like, if it works as a negative... There's got to be some merit to it as a positive. Um, that being said, I still do it, but I do it more consciously now, and, and I make sure that it's that I tell myself that it's okay, um, and I'm not sitting there trying to convince myself of it, right? So, I don't know. Food for thought. Uh, which way was I doing these? This thing up. Therapy is a funny thing, too. It's it's a lot of what I learn in therapy, I have the immediate thought of, well, duh, um, which is not saying that my therapist is dumb. It's saying that that simple ass thing was right in front of me this whole time. Um, having someone with a Ph.D. say it to me uh, is all I needed to actually believe it. Right. Uh, and that's, I find that super interesting. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I have had success in going to therapy for a while, learning a lot, and then putting it into practice. Um, because it's a lot of these like, duh, aha kind of moments. Um, but... It's the discipline that's hard, right? It's it's the discipline of putting these... And that, that's what gets a lot harder um, as I get older, is having that discipline and finding, is what I'll say, finding that discipline. Um, because when the negative self-thoughts come, there's not a whole lot I can do. Like, they're... Um, they're here. They're, they're going to be here. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to live with them forever. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I can either curl up into a ball 
which I've gotten really good at, um, and just sleep and, and just wait for them to go away. Or if, if I have it in me, I can fight and, and I can, um, do things that trained professionals have found work for other people and just try, right? Like it, it kind of just comes back to that. Just trying just that word. Try, um, Kristen and I found a, a YouTube channel called the try guys recently. Um, for dudes that just try different shit. has nothing to do with psychology or therapy or anything like that. They just try wacky stuff. Um, eat 90 sushi rolls. Uh, eat 50 hot dogs. It's not all eating stuff, but that's just one of their more recent videos was eating related. And, uh, yeah, just that word. Just that, that word try. Um, I've really connected with here lately. For the record, I haven't looked at the chat in... A while so if you guys are talking to me you're gonna have to continue to wait for me to finish this and finish this rant that I'm currently on but yeah um, that word has helped me um, and it, it's also a lot of that kind of stuff too it, you know when I have these duh moments um, sometimes it's as simple as the words that like just the way that this particular therapist described something um, connect with a part of my brain or a part of my past or an experience that I've been through or a mistake that I've made. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, those are the things that I remember and, and that I, uh, have actual success with. So yeah, go, uh, go try another couple therapists, man. See if, uh, See if that gets you anywhere. It might not. But, I I mean, if you have insurance, where are you out? 20 bucks, 25 bucks for a copay? That's worth it. It's worth it to try it. That's worth a couple less sets of props next month, right? Um, FPV is therapy and all, but therapy is therapy too. <laughs> like, um, FPV makes me as sad as it makes me happy. Um, unfortunately, and, uh, that is, you know, that, that's, ah, fuck, you idiot. Hey, I cleared it. Look at that. That was lucky. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's the way that I work when, um, when I'm in a depressive place, uh, if anything goes wrong, it makes it way worse. So when I try to do th FPV stuff, when I'm down, um, if I don't fly well, or if I break something, or if uh, I try to build something and it doesn't go absolutely perfect in every single way, uh, it puts me into a much worse place than I was in previous to that. And that's really hard because that then um, drives the point home that I'm shit and I don't deserve any of this and that, you know, you guys are all going to stop watching tomorrow and that, you know, I'm actually a shitty pilot and all those wonderful things that the asshole inside of my head that will never go away uh, is really good at convincing me of. So, uh, yeah, man, it's fucking hard. It's really hard. Uh, this streaming business is, and, and just, um, not necessarily the streaming. The, the, the streaming is, is how, is the medium in which I've had some success and, and I've spent time and, um, I have to be very careful of, so, you know, I, I didn't do the Patreon thing. Um, a lot of you guys were like, hey, do it. We want to support you. We want to help. Um, and, and you were totally right. And I have absolutely no regrets. But I have to be careful um, because introducing money into a hobby is 
a very scary thing for me and I have driven high bees into the ground because of it and um, it's just something that I gotta be careful of and that's me that's a I fucking lost my train of thought. I don't know why I was going down that road, but uh, yeah, it's 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 just been an interesting journey. It's been a very interesting journey. Um, what one of the things that I've that I didn't expect um, that I consider myself very lucky um, for is that for whatever reason um, I'm usually able to. Uh, come on Sundays and Mondays and um, knock a stream out where I'm pretty sure that you guys can tell I, I, I don't hide it very well like my you can pretty much tell by my face pretty quickly um, if I'm in a good place or a bad place but I'm able to get through it and, and I'm able to do something that um, you guys very graciously keep telling me is beneficial to you um and i'm able to do that i'm able to suck it up and not let this shithead inside of my brain um penalize you guys kind of in a way and uh yeah that's a really cool thing that i didn't expect and i am so grateful and of, of all you guys hanging around for that and, and being a part of that. And it's just, I don't know, it's really, really special. And uh, the giveaways are, are, are really the way that I've, um, the giveaways are the thing that makes me not go to a place of I'm not giving back enough. And, and you guys are really cool about um, when I get that going and, and I start to get, start to say those things in the stream and so I guess the best example is uh last week Monday and Tuesday where I just I, I just couldn't get it together um to stream and I hopped on for a couple minutes and said you know hey guys so sorry um I'm, I swear I'll make it up to you on the giveaways um and uh you know everybody said like hey it's not about the giveaways we're here for you um which is great. Like, I, I, I love that. But the giveaways are for me as much as they are for you guys, if I'm completely honest. Um, because they're just this way for me to not feel like um, I... It's a weird word for it, but it, it's a way for me to not feel like I owe you something. And, like, every single one of you could write me a 100-page essay that... I don't owe you anything, but it doesn't matter. Like that's, that's inside of me. Like there's some, there's, um, and this is one of the things that I've been actually working on in therapy is that, um, I just don't feel like I'm worthy. Like I, I don't feel like I deserve it. Um, I, I downplay everything. I don't take credit for any, everything. Um, it's just, and, and what I like about that is that I think, I hope that it, I really try for it to make me a very humble person. And, and I, I try really hard to have as little of an ego as possible. Um, because I really, oh man. All right. So I was worried about that. <laughs> One of the LEDs just fell off. So when I put it into the, um, when I, when I put it into this little protector thing, it didn't quite fit and I had to really push it to get it in there. And, uh, I was kind of like, well, you hit by props and blow up anyway, <laughs> but I had a feeling that I might have been pushing a little too hard on it. So let's just uh, we'll just drop this on here and we'll uh, I'll just get the soldering iron in there as much as I nah, I can't get it in there at all. That's fine, whatever. They're gonna break off anyway. They, when they get prop stricken one by one, they break off. So whatever. Um, but yeah, that that's that's kind of the, the deal there. Um, John Dyson says uh, can relate to what you say about things going wrong. Can increase thoughts. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard, man. Our brain is a scary, scary, misunderstood place. Um, Give away to help them understand what they're going through. Also, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, and I know that, and I, and I love that, um, Roscoe. I, I know that you guys aren't here to win stuff, and that's very cool. Like, very, very, very cool. And um, it's also something that I've paid really close attention to because I don't want it to become about that. Like, um, Joshua recently said it on, on one of his podcasts. Like, somebody was was spamming the chat about um, the giveaway and he was just, he just flat out said, like, look, if, if you're here for the giveaways, you're not in the right place. Like, th- this is not the place for you if, if you've come about the giveaways. And I'm, and I'm really glad that I haven't had to say that. Um, but it is very true. Like, it's, um, yeah, the, 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 like I said, the giveaways are just my way of feeling um, equity, right? It's, as a communications major, um one of the big things that they dr- drill into you, and it's so true, um, is that with all communications, uh, both parties strive for equity. Um, and it's not just communications, it's everything in life, right? It's relationships, it's, it's, um, it's when you're at your job, it's your career, it's, it's just everything, right? If, if you don't feel equity, then you're not gonna be happy, like period. Like we're we're wired to um, crave equity. It's it's what's fair. It's what's right. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's one of those like duh kind of things, right? But it's important. It's it's important to realize that, and it's important to learn that about yourself. Um, and when I started doing the giveaways, that that was one of the things that I realized. Like it really, I really enjoyed it. And, and it felt so good because of that. Um, because at the end of the day, I didn't feel at all... Like, if I got done with a Monday night stream and I was like, ah, stream kind of sucked, I was kind of all over the place, I made a bunch of mistakes, or, um, you know, I forgot to do this, I forgot to do that. Um, and I'll straight up say it to Kristen, and at the end of that sentence will be, but the giveaways are awesome, I had a blast, and the guys won some cool stuff, and I can't wait to see the pictures and the videos of them unboxing it and then building it and like, oh, that's so cool. And uh, yeah, like that's me doing me. And uh, luckily, in the past two weeks, I found a couple websites which had some pretty good deals for you guys. So I'm like kind of loaded up. I think I'm pretty much good. I'm good on the five inch tier for like three months, I think, which is awesome because that's the stuff that can get a little bit expensive. Um, Tiny Whoop tier, I'm okay on. It's the the three inch micro brushless tier that I got to uh, I got to get my shit together on that tier. I, I have like two, maybe three weeks worth of stuff, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I gotta find a good. Um, Gotta find a good company to work with on that one. Maybe it'll be Emacs. I, I hope it'll be Emacs. Um, although I don't know. I I, I ugh, there's certain stuff that Emacs sells that I really love, and I, I would love to get my hands on a whole bunch of 1306s and 1606s and and get those into your guys' hands because I, I I really um, the 1606 especially. I really think that's kind of a diamond in a, in the rough sort of um, a motor that's just not getting the love that it deserves. Um, But at 12 bucks a motor, right, I'm not just going to give away one motor. I'm giving away five. I'm not even going to give away just four because I'm not going to set you up with motors that if you break one your first time out, you're stuck. I'm always going to give five motors away. You know, um, 50, 50 plus bucks times four is a lot. Like, I, I, I don't think the... I don't think that middle tier has enough people on it per month to cover that. Um, and, like, I, I'm trying for it not to just cover it. I'm, I'm trying to... I'm going about it with the, the business approach of your... Like, your cost should be 50% of, of the profit, right? Everything should be marked up 100%. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do because that way... Um, I have a good amount of budget to buy testing stuff, to buy every single three inch propeller, to buy every single 1505 motor that's available, every single 1507, and be able to do some really like in depth, fair tests of this stuff. Um, 
So yeah, I have to, um, and, I, and I learned this all the hard way. Like I just went crazy initially, um, because I just, I kept like a running tally in my head and I thought I was, I thought I'd done the math correctly in my head, but apparently I hadn't. Um, and that's all right. I mean, it wasn't the end of the world. It was just, uh, you know, we had a, we had a ramen month or two in, uh, on Team CI. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's been a blast, and and I've I've absolutely loved doing it, and you guys have been, um, just super cool about it, and I I really do appreciate that, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like like initially I thought it was just a way to to kind of I thought it would be a quick win to to get some more people into the stream, um, and and onto the Patreon channel, but it's it just that's not the value of it for me at all. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm glad that I did it and I'm glad that you guys have been super cool because it's been a blast and I have no plans to stop. The only thing that'll stop it is if I can't, like, is it, is if I straight up have to start buying stuff at retail and that won't even stop it. That'll just make the prizes less good, which has kind of already happened. You know, like it was awesome for the, for the like two months there to be giving away, hundred dollar drib and and stingy frames like that was sick but i mean i knew that was gonna come to an end at some point so and it did but that's okay everybody's been super cool about um the presence i would what i would really want to try to figure out i've been thinking a lot about this lately um <clears throat> i want to figure out how to like give you guys the option because like I usually will have like two or three things available in, you know, X, Y, or Z tier. Um, I would love to figure out a slick way of like, like, I think I'll still pick an item. Um, but then I think basically in the message that I send, um, I think I'm just going to start saying like, <clears throat> let me know if you don't have any use for this thing because I'll, I'll tell you what other things are available. Um, I think that's going to be the easiest way to kind of do that. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm going to give it some more thought. Because that's that was the whole point of the, of the, the multiple tiers, right? Is that I make sure that if you only have a 5-inch rig, you can only get 5-inch stuff. Um, but there's a whole big wide world of, 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 you know, there's niches within niches within niches. Or niches, if you prefer that pronunciation. Oh, David, thanks, man. Do you really? You mutant. I, that's part of my mission statement on my website. Ah, to say the word niche, niche. Niche brands. Small business and niche brands. Look at you go. Someday you'll say it correctly. Hey. I wonder what uh, the internet says. I bet you they have both pronunciations. Because I actually did look it up at one point. And it said there were multiple pronunciations. Hey, David, thanks, man. David uh, David Kronika with a $20 super chat. Dude, very, very generous. Much, much appreciated. Uh, he says, just keep doing what you're doing. I enjoy it and bet others do too. Hell yeah. Roscoe, you've never used an Emacs product. Well, you're missing out, man. They have some good stuff. Um, they have some stuff that's a little iffy. Um, but they certainly have some good stuff, uh, and their the the prices on their stuff. So the, the my deal with Emacs is um, their stuff is priced appropriately. Uh, some of their stuff is is priced lower than what it's worth, in my opinion. Um, most of their stuff is absolutely dead on. But what I haven't seen is an Emacs product that is priced way higher than what it should be. And that's pretty damn good. That's um, that's hard to do. So yeah, that's um, that says a lot about them. They don't make the highest quality stuff, um, but I don't think with how hard we abuse stuff, it really makes sense. In in some cases, um, Flyduino, in my opinion, is the perfect example of that. Um, their gear is beautiful, it works well, um, but 
I don't see a point in spending twice as much on gear that doesn't perform twice as good. Um, and in my opinion, doesn't perform as good as um, Betaflight. Uh, the, the physical components are absolutely gorgeous and they are, there is no question in my mind that they are made better than everything else, period. Um, once you've done a KISS build, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of understand. Like, it's just made to a higher standard. Um, but I think their pricing is a little too high. And, nah, you know, that's not fair. The, their pricing probably isn't too high because it is that good. Um, it's just that it, it being nicer doesn't make it any more durable when I hurdle it into a brick wall at 70 miles an hour like it, it's it's not there's not an in enough of an increase in durability to warrant the the extra cost um i think that and then we have the other side of it right we have like i hate to pick on them because they do make some nice stuff but racer star just as an example um i think they're on the opposite side where they've priced their stuff a little bit too low and um, it becomes not worth it because of the failure rates and because of the, the physical failures that happen with their gear and you're left having to rebuy or wait for customer service or, you know, the deal. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I've found this happy place for me, um, for the way that I fly kind of right in between there. And I preach that happy place because I do think that um, that it is where you want to be. I, I genuinely do believe that um, it makes more sense to be in that, that middle zone. And, uh, yeah, it's worked well for me, so why wouldn't it work well for you? But I do also try to always be um, throw in the disclaimers of, like, you know, hey, I crash a lot fly around concrete a lot if you fly around grass a lot your situation is different um because that's very easy to forget right it's it's very easy to just go on and say hey what's the best motor and there is no such thing 1606 for a three inch absolutely david um the uh so you can see this in kebabs testing uh previously for uh, micro rigs, it was all 110 whatever motors, 1104, 5, 6, 7, 8. And um, when I talked to Bob about that being completely wrong, uh, right when he was starting with the toothpick, he really ran with it. And you look at his toothpick motors, and they're 1304 and 1303, and you know, he doesn't make a single 110 whatever motor um, just because it doesn't have enough stator width to really control a 3 inch prop. Um, and with the heavier props, like the T-Motor 3140 and the, all the HQ props, the 333s, the 343s, the 353s, um, they're just too heavy. They're, they're too heavy for these, um, 13 and some of even the 14 motors. They really need a 15 mil wide or a 16 mil wide stator. Um, and yeah, with RPM filtering, the... Emac 16, so the Emac 1606 is a very notchy motor. It's a race motor, um, and that notchiness in previous Betaflight versions was just too much, and you, you couldn't get a good tune, and and it was just there were just too many vibes happening. Uh, but the RPM filters are a goddamn miracle for that. Like the three harmonics really just nail the uh, the motor and prop vibrations that we get at the higher RPMs with micros. And they're just a complete game changer. And now those 1606 motors, I always loved the power band and I always loved the torque that they had. Uh, and I love that they've got a three millimeter motor shaft. But if I can't get a good tune, the motor is worthless to me. And now that I can get a good tune, that is pretty much my favorite three inch motor at the moment. Um, I haven't tried them all. I'm really looking forward to trying the RC in power uh, 1506s. But 
I really wish somebody would do a 1605 or even a 1604. Um, I think those are going to be, um, I think those are really the appropriate sizes. The 1606 is great, but holy hell does it make power. Um, and there's just no need for it to make quite that much power uh, on a freestyle rig, in my opinion. But then again, I fly very differently. No right answers. No wrong answers either. Yeah, there are wrong answers. Who are we kidding? Plenty of wrong answers. Most of the answers are wrong answers. <laughs> if you're on the internet, at least. <laughs> All right. Get on there, little fella. Yeah, buddy. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> like when I get them good ones. Next. These race wires are tedious when you're installing them, but man, are they nice. Uh, any idea when the glide frames will be back in stock? I didn't even know they went out of stock. Um, they did... Um, they did go out of stock a few months ago, and he got them back in pretty quick, although there wasn't a man-eating virus, so it could be a while. What, uh, uh, message, uh, message Bob on Facebook and ask him, and he'll probably get back to you and tell you. I will try to remember to do the same. You looking to get the whole frame, or are you just looking for, um... Do you just need replacement pieces? If you just need replacement pieces, definitely message them. Mm. Um, hell, if it's the right replacement piece, I might even be able to help you out. And then when they come back in stock, just uh, have a replacement shipped to me. Because there are certain parts of the glide frame that I have a bunch of extras because they don't break. Like the X-plate on the bottom... That fucker never breaks, so I have a bunch of extras. Although, you probably don't need it since it's never the part that breaks. <laughs> Come on, heat up. There it is. Uh, this is really dumb to be doing this above the motor like this. Uh, I could easily solder ball right into the, uh, right into the stator, but hey. It's fun television, I guess. Ouch. Fucking previous one is hot. I also do things to try to prevent from the solder ball situation. Whole frame. Can't help you there, John. Sorry. I already did a, um... I already ordered one of those frames and did a giveaway for it. When it does come in, though, make sure you get some extra arms. Um, you will absolutely break the arms. Bob has designed the arms to break <clears throat> before the base plate, before the X plate, before the top plate, um, and to take some of the energy away from the motor so that hopefully your motor survives the hit. So, yeah, get you some extra arms because you will break them. But they're very easy to replace. And, uh, yeah, I fully believe that that is the correct design decision for a frame. Is to uh, lighten up the arms as much as you possibly can. Basically, my, my whole philosophy is to have the most fragile, underpowered setup that I can possibly stand. Um, underpowered because it forces me to stay closer to stuff that I'm throwing myself over. Uh, also because underpowered means lightweight, right? Um, and as fragile as possible because that's lightweight, right? That, that's how you get the lightest weight set up. Um, that approach mainly comes out of motorsports. Uh, <clears throat> I autocross, drag race, all the fun stuff. A 3,600-pound uh, Mustang Cobra that was a good lesson in doing more with more, uh, which is equivalent to, like, a 7 700-gram seven uh, 
2208 or 2407 big nasty quad with a big strong frame um and then after many years of that when i got a miata i learned that less is more <laughs> in, in a lot of cases um and paying closer attention to what you can ditch rather than what you can gain um is less expensive and just kind of more fun and, and more connected better with me in the way that I tuned and built and drove. So like for sure to each their own, but uh, if you haven't tried that minimalist approach, give it a shot because it's, it's a real thing. Is real. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And yeah, it's fine. They're kind of tight, but not bad. All right, one mo, and then we can fiddle around. It looks like I looks like these wires are all a little bit long here, which is kind of annoying. But I should be able to move these guys back a little bit. Didn't notice that. Yeah, living dangerously, exactly. <laughs> what are you guys talking about over there? Oh, you guys are talking location? Oh, shit. Yeah, man, you guys are all over the world. I, I um, like, I knew this was a global hobby, but uh, I, it's probably the fact that I do those EU streams on Sundays after Joshua. Um, but... It's been really cool to see how many of you guys are, are all over the world. What drives me insane about it is how unbelievably expensive the shipping is. Like, I would, I really wish I could do overseas giveaways. But, like, I mean, the first time it happened, somebody won an RXSR. And I was like, dude, you know, I'm not going to pay $15 in shipping to send you something that costs $15. <laughs> so I just ended up PayPaling them the, the value of the RXSR... Which, like, you know, at the time I was I was just doing the giveaways with, like, stuff, extra stuff that I had. And I'm like, well, shit, that, that kind of screws me because, like, yeah, I guess I, I, I paid for this. But the whole point was to, to just kind of, oh, there's my, uh, <laughs> there's my extra thing of solder. Um, you guys know what I'm saying. But, yeah, it, it, it sucks, man. I wish there was a cheaper way to ship overseas. Because um, I hate having to leave you guys out. But that being said, it does kind of work. Like doing the 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 giveaway streams Monday nights, um, and then just having Sundays as all talk all the time, all all fun, um, it does work shockingly well. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just I don't want to leave people out. That kind of stinks. But this is the world that we live in. Ideally. Um, when I start getting stuff for reviews, then it'll become worth it. You know, if I have like a a hundred dollar bind and fly, um, that becomes totally worth uh, fifteen dollars shipping. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Kind of stole that idea from Nick Burns a little bit. <clears throat> Where he's like, you know, I'll cover five of the shipping, and then if you're overseas, you got to cover the rest. And, yeah, I mean, I think that makes total sense to pay 10 or 15 bucks for crazy shipping for a $100 bind and fly, right? But I don't think it necessarily makes sense for six or seven sets of props. <laughs> Especially because they're going to start to cost even more. You know, now we're talking $20, 25 because the package is a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Man, I'm going to lose my voice. I don't, uh, I weirdly miss the days that I used to spend a lot of time on the phone at work because my voice was like a beast <clears throat> back then. Um, but I do, at this current job, they discourage us from doing things over the phone. <clears throat> so 90% of what we do is, uh, is email and case comment related. And yeah, you guys have seen it before. My voice is just like shot. By the end of uh, four hours of streaming, split across two days. But I am trying to talk a little bit quieter here. 
Um, also, Kristen is out in the in the living room right outside of the den doing work, so trying to be a good neighbor, good uh, working compatriot. It's important when you both, both work from home to be as... Uh, I'm a loud motherfucker too, so it's it, for me it's a thing. She's a, she's a very quiet person, so she it doesn't have to she doesn't even have to think about it. But yeah, for me, like if I had my way, I would have music fucking wailing twenty four seven. Um, music sounds better louder, and uh, one of my hobbies was home theater, so I have a really decent home theater setup. And yeah, if it's too loud, you're too old. This is a t-shirt that my dad used to have that I fucking love. I actually need to find that t-shirt. I'm sure that t-shirt exists on the internet. I gotta find it and get me one. Maybe I'll get him one while I'm at it. And there we have it. Fresh 1600s. Now we just have to uh, scooch these little guys around because these are not going to want to sit and play nicely on their little homes here. So let's knock that out. Let's make sure that we do the hot one first so that I burn my fingers. That's very important. Eh. Alright. Let's get you in there. Right, that's going to be a little bit better like that. This one wasn't too bad. These other ones are going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, Roscoe Six. On that note, can you respin my prize for that shipping reason? Uh, Would you win, Roscoe? Uh, I'm probably gonna say no. <laughs> Unless you don't want to pay the extra in shipping. If you don't want to pay the extra in shipping, then I have to say yes. But, um, yeah. Otherwise, I'm I'm totally cool with it. Um. Well. Well. Here, you'll be the first one. Is it because you have no use for that thing? Um, tell me what you won, and, um, if you have no use for that thing, I'll take a look and see if there's another thing. Alright, so I just made this way worse, this, uh, this top piece being cracked, so I'm gonna dump some, uh, uh, some super glue in there. I always want to call it CA, but, uh, not everybody knows what CA is, and because of that, you should not use that acronym if there's another word for it that will eliminate that. That is uh, Communications 101. Only use jargon if there's no chance of it being misunderstood and if there's an actual advantage to it. Like, it has less syllables. We run into that in the, in the pharma industry all the time, right? Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it is very bad practice to use jargon just for the sake of of using jargon or trying to sound important or any of the other dumbass reasons that 99% of the people that I run into in the corporate world use jargon. If you've been around, you've probably heard me rant about jargon a few times by now. I try not to. Um, but, man... In my opinion, there's no better way to look and sound like a douchebag than to use jargon for no reason. And even better, which what most people do is to use it incorrectly. Oh my god. People using jargon incorrectly? I'm going to cut your head off and eat it. I wish I'd been live streaming like back when I was really. Cr I, I used to be so much more opinionated and like so much more loudmouthed about shit. I, I can still get a little loudmouthed about political shit because I, I I do have very very strong views and um and science is science and facts are facts um and I will leave it at there before I launch into something. But yeah, I used to be. Uh, What's good is it comes from a place of, like, humor um, when I get fired up. But, uh, yeah, man, back in my 20s, <laughs> I used to make some people laugh. Now I'm just trying to be a good, good human more than anything else. 
Uh, I think it's only known as CA by modelers and dentists. Uh, Adam from uh, Adam Savage from Tested uh, refers to it as CA, or sometimes he'll actually do the full name, which I want to say it's like Chirin Acrylate or something like that. I, I I meant to look it up at one point. Um, so yeah, he he says it a lot, and I, and I he makes it sound like a lot of makers say it. Um, but yeah, I mean it. it Sure, super glue is not the right name for it, right? Super glue is, is the same thing as saying, as, as Google becoming a verb, right? I'm going to Google this. That doesn't mean anything. It's the name of a company, right? But it's become socially accepted, and it is what the majority of people know, and that's all that matters. Kleenex. Yeah, Kleenex, right. Hoover. Um, although that's more in Europe, um, that they use Hoover as a verb. Uh but I digress. So now I've got this situation where this super glue is squeezing out all over the goddamn place. <laughs> and I'm trying to give this, um, trying to give this uh, VHB a second to adhere. Oh man, that super glue is fucking everywhere. Well, that ain't coming off even when I want it to. But I'll deal with that at a later time. <laughs> I don't have to think about it right now. Uh, I, what I am going to do, though, is I am going to put the zip tie and the foam footy on right now. <clears throat> uh, Ken Hull keeps hearing a beep in the background. That Lego car you posted to Facebook was cool. A beep? What beep would you be hearing? What beep would you be hearing? Um, I'm not one of those people that doesn't change the battery in their smoke detector. Um, and typically beeps drive me nuts, so I wonder if it's something in OBS. What are you talking about wearing a suit? Where'd that come from, Roscoe? <laughs> as far as I can tell, Roscoe just randomly says I never owned a suit, so that rules me out. <laughs> I'm sure I'm just missing the context, but... Um, what was the context of the suit? It's probably something I was just talking about that I'm just corporate. overlooking. Oh, corporate stuff. Ah, you don't need a suit for corporate shit, man. Most, uh, most places don't require, don't want you wearing suits anyway. Most places want you, um, in business casual. You wouldn't believe what I get away with at, uh, you know, hell, Equifax, uh, I guess that's the biggest company I worked for, but yeah, suits are uh, are very uncommon to be honest with you. There's some sales get. I I, I was in sales before project management, and um, when I would uh, one of my questions in the interview would be dress code, and if they wanted suits for the most part, that disqualified that job for me unless it paid really really well or was with a and or was with a company that I really cared about. Um, but yeah, suits are are nowhere near as much of a thing as uh, as they once were. Where the hell did that little foam jib-jab go? Whatever, I'll just grab another one. Oh, you know what? It's probably stuck to it because I think I pulled the... Uh... No, it's gone. Oh, I know where it is. It's stuck to the uh, black rag that I was just using. <laughs> Come on, you jerk. Get off of there. Any of you guys see uh, any of the uh, Instagram close friend stuff? I added as many people as I could in the list. And uh, I've been doing some of that close friend Instagramming. It's kind of fun. Kind of fun. Been having a good time with it. Mmm. Get this zip tie on here, and so props out. So it'll hit this side. So I want the knobbly knob on the front. Um, I just recently switched from props in to props out, which is why I have to like talk that out every time for myself. <laughs> because if I just go on autopilot, I'll put it on the wrong side. 
which is interesting. Like you'd think that uh, all since it's a, it's binary, right? It's it's one side or the other. You would think that my brain would just immediately like, oh yeah, everything is just reversed there, but it doesn't work like that. My brain bucket does not compute in that way, unfortunately. But hey, knowing is half the battle. As people much wiser than me say. Alright. That guy should be good. All that CA up in there. <laughs> Somebody hook me up. Look up the, uh, uh, the copy and paste the uh, the full name of uh, of what CA is the acronym for. Because now I'm curious. I'm pretty sure the end of it is acrylide, but I'm uh, it's cr it's psi or cry is the beginning, and then the very end is like acrylate or acrylide or something like that. I just I don't know what's uh, in between. Oh, that one wasn't bad. Uh, again, I, I just I got these wires a little bit too long, so I got to pull these guys off and scooch them up ever so slightly, which is kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. Ooh, this one's gonna be bad. I know we're all good. Cool. Uh, when I say bad, what I mean is I thought I was gonna have to push it up so far that these wires were gonna ram right into this lip of the base plate, um, but we are. Good to go. I got it just about right, which makes sense because I, before I cut these the other night, I did measure them. Um, so let's get some Scrooby Doobies going. Uh, tools. I need tools, right? Is that how it works? Is that how things work around here? We use tools. It's like monkeys. One of my favorite sayings ever. When somebody's like struggling to use a thing, is to say that it's like m watching monkeys use tools for the first time ever. Oh, I love it! I just love it. What? I don't know. <laughs> say that to Kristen a lot. Don't tell anybody though. It's mean. She's just a clumsy girl, man. I can't help that. I, I, it's, I'm just, uh, just reacting to the external stimuli around me. Oh, hey, here's a, uh, here's an arm that I've super glued a bunch of times, which you're not gonna be able to see because Logitech's autofocusing program sucks a big bag of dicks. All right, one motor is on. And I am not Loctiting these because the, the, these all have, like, an obscene amount of Loctite already on them. <laughs> all right, let's get this front guy on here. Uh, all right. These, um, and if you're a Glide fan, these are the Brain 3D uh, arm skids, which are not as durable as the BMC 3D ones but they are lighter. Um, so I'm just kind of trying them out. I'm curious as to... Wow, that screw is way too long. Oh, shit, I remember. I have to run that longer screw in there. That's right. Uh, I need... Uh, what I really need is an M3 by 9. I need M3 by 9 hardware, and it doesn't exist. I'll be all right, though. It's not touching. I do have to be careful with this one, though. I have to uh, pay attention with this one on the Maiden to make sure that the uh, none of these screws are touching the motor uh, windings because, god damn, they are coming close. <laughs> I had to go up to an M3x10 screw um, to clear this, and it's just, it's just a little scary how close it is, but it, it'll be fine. There is just enough clearance. Clarence. And yeah, this is a, a by eight. So that what I did is I put by tens on these two, um, and then I did a by eight on this one because there's less clearance on this one uh, on the back side. So not totally ideal, but the best that I can do um, with the hardware that I have. And I also try not to space these out any farther 
because they lose strength when you do that. So we'll see if they get uh, if they're touching the windings and, and the motors get hot on the maiden. I'll have to just space them out a little bit, which is fine. It's not the end of the world, but try it this way first. You guys, no, this is the regular Glad. I, I still haven't. Uh, yeah, it's true, Daniel. We are we are absolutely we are absolutely monkeys using tools, but. The saying is, it's like watching monkeys use tools for the first time. That's the, that's the uh, the funny bit. Just like figuring it out. Oh boy, I almost glued myself to it. Woo! That cured on my skin in a hurry. Jeez. All right, so this one is not going to be as easy because I can already see that this screw is ramming into the one. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to have to space this out a little bit. Which is annoying as hell, but it's okay. We'll be fine. Let me put this one in here just to get it. Again, I'm using uh, titanium here just to get as much weight as possible off the arms. Ends of the arms, too. Yeah, this is way too long. I can't do it. Um, I don't even think I can really space it out enough. I think I'm just going to go to a M3 by 8 and just have it not penetrate. Wow, I just glued myself to myself. God, super glue is vicious. Vicious, vicious, vicious. Oh, that's a good one, Daniel. <laughs> Sarmiento's girlfriend says, uh, did you do this with your feet? <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Ah, Stevie Wonder could see that. Hell yeah, Roscoe. All right, let me cut this super glue off of me because it just doesn't seem to want to leave me peacefully. Jeez. All right, there we go. Any of you guys cut your fingernails and or toenails with your uh, with your wire clippers, or is that just me? Is that disgusting? Kristen just made a noise like it's disgusting. What she doesn't understand, though, is that they're exactly the same as toenail clippers. Am I right, fellas? Am I right? I know I'm right. I don't need you guys to validate my rightness. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're going to go down to this, because I think this is an 8, right? Uh, no. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's an eight. Yeah, all right, we'll do an eight, and it just won't have, uh, we'll be fine. It'll be fine. I ha I also have an unbelievable amount of these um, T-Motor F40 Pro 2 staters, because ReadyMade RC was blowing out, uh, so the, the replacement... Uh, bells were uh, have always been thirteen dollars, and th uh, when ReadyMade RC was getting rid of their um, Rotoriot uh, old stock, they were selling the entire motor, the entire motor for fourteen bucks. So I just bought tons of them instead of buying the replacement bells. So I I just have like countless F40 Pro 2 1600 mAh uh, extra stators. I probably have almost twenty extra stators. <laughs> so if uh, if this rips out, I kind of couldn't care less. <laughs> and it's couldn't care less. It's not could care less, because if you could care less, then you care, because you could care even less. So maybe you care a lot. There's no telling. It's couldn't care less. For fuck's sake. If we're going to speak English, we might as well speak it right. Right? I mean, if we're going to do something, let's do it right. What do you say? What do you say? Let's all be uh, speech Nazis. That's what it's called, right? Speech Nazis, I think. I think that's the deal. I think that's what's been screamed at me before. <laughs> Ha 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 Funny, 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 funny. I need a little soundboard with like a fart sound and 
a, uh, a vomit sound. Yeah, hell yeah. Did work in the radio station for a bit in college. Uh, I don't think that these are the right length. I think these are M3 by seven and not eight. And you really need M3 by eights on these five mil arms. Really makes a big difference. Oh yeah, they're sevens. Okay, good. Glad I caught that. That would have been disastrous. Get out of there. All right. Let's find an eight. Nope, I think I have all sevens in here. Which is strange, because I thought I pulled these out of arms. I guess not. Sprinkles is very new to 4.1. What questions do you have, man? I'll help. I am not new to 4.1. Uh, John Dyson says, remember safety glasses when clipping nails to the side. <laughs> Nah, I put my finger over top so it doesn't go flying around the room. I I, oh, I don't like when they go flying around the room. I think that's horrifying. I don't like finding them. I don't like the sound. I also try to clip my nails so that it doesn't make that huge snap. Like, I, I try to, A, cut them after I get out of the shower so they're softy. But if I don't clip them soft, um, we got to get off of this topic. This is a gross fucking topic. Um, but I, I just clip them like a little bit at a time. Like I nibble at it, just like across the nail, and that way it doesn't make that horrendous clicking sound. Go Kristen goes outside. That's the hotness. That's the move right there. Is going the fuck outside. Um, but the way that I do it, because the 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 crack noise like makes it's like nails on a chalkboard for me. Um, I had a coworker who used to clip his nails at his desk, and it, oh my fucking god, it drove me insane. And I'm like scarred from that experience now. You know how that is? You know how that, you know who I'm talking about, honey? Did I ever tell you that story? She left. She I am dead to her. I'm here. Um did I ever tell you that story about who used to clip his nails at his desk? No. Fucking Jack. Why? Because he uh, Why he just didn't okay? realize it. Yeah. He just didn't realize how shockingly like awful it was for other people. Huh. Because once somebody finally did say something, and it sure as shit wasn't me, because he was a really good friend of mine. Um, Daniel, this is a uh, Kennedy. It's made by a company called Kennedy. And from what I've been told from some of the uh, folks in the stream, is it's, a, it's really nice. I've had it for like almost 20 years, and it's been completely bulletproof. Um, it is a, uh, it's a machinist's toolbox. That's why all the, draw the drawers are kind of small. Um, and check this out. It's got this front piece here that comes out and goes up and it locks in it's seven and then you can, you can lock it. And when you, when you lock it, it locks this thing in place. Look, look like right around here. See that pin drop down, that pin drops down into, into that. So when you lock it, so in order to lock it, you got to close the top. Um, and then you can put this thing up. And then you lock it, and the top is locked, and all the drawers are obviously behind this. So it's like super duper secure. Um, yeah, Kennedy is who makes it. Do I have the... Uh, is that the instruction manual down there? It is! Look at that! Holy hell. No, it's not. It's the instructions for the soldering iron. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what instructions would there be, really, I guess, for a, uh, a toolbox? Yeah, there's a really nice toolbox. Really, really nice. Um... I don't know what it costs, but uh, it's held up really well for me. And it's this cool, like, bronze-ish, brownish kind of color. There it goes. Yeah, and then that thing just slides away. Doesn't get in the way. I would almost... I would almost maybe get a size smaller, because it is unbelievably heavy. Um... So I just don't really move it. Like, it just lives here. Um, so, yeah, maybe I would get one a little bit smaller. It looks like it's about, what, like 20? 20 wide? Yeah, it's about 20 wide. Um, but I don't know. If, if you're planning on moving it around, I would definitely get a smaller size. Um, if you're going to keep it in one place, this is a, a size that's worked really well for me. 
Um, if you weren't here on the stream earlier, I actually uh, I opened all the drawers and showed everybody what's in there, so you can just rewind uh, the stream. Wood or metal? We mean uh, metal. Where did the uh, where did my red nose go? There's my red nose. Yeah, that's better. Roscoe, get the hell off 3.5.7. Am I going to have to do a live stream with you and Rugi to to get you both to get you both onto tr in my opinion what is truly the only significant advancement in flight controller software since like 3.1. Um and I'm serious about that. I I truly think that there, it's just been incremental changes all along until this. I think this is the first actual leap in uh, in flight controller tech, in software, I should say, in flight control software uh, for mini quads. Any other? Can you guys think of any other things I can second guess myself on? All right, let's do a little clean in here. This is the way I like to clean, but earlier I was in a hurry. Get all the big shit off with the toothbrush, and then come in with a microfiber, and that'll pick everything up that you knocked loose. Um, if you don't have lots and lots of microfibers in your house, get some, yo. They are cheap on Amazon, and my god are they handy. Um, we are a we are pretty much a, a paper towel and napkin free zone um, because we ha we always have like 30 or 40 microfibers floating around. Um, having a big number like that really helps because then like you just keep throwing them in the in the laundry over and over again and they and they just constantly like there's just constantly fresh ones. Um, and we try to only do our laundry like once or twice a month just to save water. Uh, and money, quite frankly, because we don't have a washer dryer here. We have to go out uh, to a place to do it. Now, I didn't get this one totally clean, but the, the residue is uh, sticky residue. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the eyeballs are great, man. Amazon, they don't cost anything on Amazon. Get you some eyeballs, too, while you're doing an Amazon order. And click one of my affiliate links. <laughs> can't believe I'm remembering to say shit like that. I was certain that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't remember. Screw that. Do it on your phone. Phones can do everything. Shit, there's stuff that phones can do that computers can't at this point. Drives me crazy. Try to use Instagram on the computer. It's awful. It's the worst experience ever. Even Facebook is almost a better experience on mobile than, uh, than on the desktop. Which is just ridiculous. And not really true, if I'm honest. But, um... I've run into things that are broken on the desktop versions of software um, that I have to do on the mobile versions. Which just makes me laugh. But it makes sense. More people are on mobile than, uh, than desktop. So why the hell wouldn't you put the most of your, uh... the majority of your tech support and, and R&D into the, uh... The apps, as they say. Although, yeah, I guess... Now that I say that, though, even with a Speedy Bee, I don't know how you would... Yeah, I don't know how you would get to 4.1. I, 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 I've had a Speedy Bee for a long time, so I always just... And, and it can do pretty much anything... But I'm pretty sure it can't do software updates. Um, so, yeah, shit, you'd have to uh, find a buddy, I think, with a desktop to uh, to do that, to bump up to 4.1. Or send your shit to me and I'll do it on the stream, I don't care. <laughs> um, where are, just don't expect to get it back, like, quickly, because I'm the worst with shipping. Fair warning. Although, if, if I had all your stuff, I would be very incentivized to 
to get off my ass and get it back to you. Like, I would feel horrible that you don't have anything to fly. So, maybe not the worst idea. Alright. And no, I won't do that for anyone else. <laughs> Unless you pay me. Um, I would... I... I... I thought for a while that I might be able to actually make, like, when I really went hard on learning how to tune um, and got really good at it back in, like, the 3.2 days, um, I thought that I might actually be able to make a couple bucks off of tuning people's stuff, but um, the problem is how long it takes. It, it, it takes hours to get a real, well, back then, um, it took hours to get a, a real tune, and at which point it's like, well, I can't charge you, you know, like, my rate for photography and stuff like just just basically my rate as to if i'm gonna work right um as freelance is like 30 40 60 bucks an hour and you know it, putting two three hours into a tune like who, nobody's gonna pay that um nowadays i could probably get a get a pretty damn good tune done in closer to an hour um, and I don't know. I, I, I wonder if people would pay 60 bucks, 50 bucks for, um, to send their stuff off and have it come back with a rockin' tune. And I mean, I, I would actually be able to set up multiple tunes. I, I've been playing around with that recently. Um, you know, we've got these PID profile one, two, and threes that are very easy and quick to switch between, um, why the hell haven't I been using them? And now that I have been using them, it's really nice because you can make sure that your PDD ratios are still correct. Um, well, the reason I would previously not use them is because I would just do all my tuning by hand. Um, so I would just go in and push the P values up by five and, D, and then the D by three or whatever it may be, um, just doing it manually. But now with the sliders in um, the, the new configurator, it's it's actually a lot easier to just when you're inputting your tune just make three versions of it um one for like totally clean props totally clean motors one for beat and banged up props um and another that's completely stock i always like to have a stock one on there just as a uh as a benchmark um or i'll go like like a little tiny bit up from stock sometimes but uh yeah. Oh, yeah. Shipping would be a pain in the ass. Yeah, you can't flash them on SpeedyB. That's a shame. I'm I'm actually surprised that you can't because fuck, SpeedyB does everything else. I'm 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 surprised that they haven't figured that out. Although it's probably just like one person. I think I just pushed the motor into the camera. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling SpeedyB is just like one or two people. So trying to figure that shit out would take quite a bit of time. If you don't have Speedy B though, man, it's uh, it's not expensive, and it has gotten me out of a couple jams. It it has uh, definitely proved its worth to me. Um, I don't actually know what it costs. I got it in my uh, in my volunteer gift bag from uh, Rotorite Rampage two years ago. I guess it was now. Damn, it's a long time ago. But yeah, it's uh, there have been a couple situations where I'm like, ah, shit, so-and-so value is not adjustable within the OSD, um, and SpeedyB has it, and away we go. All's right with the world. What time is it? 7.10? All right, got to finish this up uh, and go out and fly. I can see long shadows outside already. So let's rip through this. I'm going to talk a little bit less and then go and get you guys some cool footage to watch tomorrow, maybe. Uh, should I do an edit tomorrow? You guys want to see that or you guys want to see more builds and repairs? Or both? Yeah, I should do both. I have a lot of edits that need to get done. I've been a bad FPVer when it comes to uh, spending time on edits. But, I've got a lot of other stuff to do. And all things, um, all things considered, 3.5.7 is great. 
it, it, but fuck me, the RPM filters are impressive. My God, they just do things that like blow me away. Like I, I at least twenty times I have flown back to myself from like 10, 15 seconds away with an entire um, blade of a propeller missing. Like that's ridiculous, and the motors aren't even hot. So like, think about you know, long range stuff or unrecoverable stuff. Like that's a big deal. That's a really big deal being able to do that. I mean, that is legitimately the difference between losing and getting a quad back. Um, you know, you bash a seagull or something when you're out over the ocean. I mean, being able to not have the ESCs and motors catch on fire when you're, when you're limping home, that's huge. So yeah, I'm, uh, and and also the, the the fucking tunes that you're able to get are ridiculous. I mean, on a five inch rig, being able to run P's and D's in the '80s and '90s that's absurd. I mean, like we haven't even come close. We haven't seen something that can come close to that, um, unless it's an absolute zero mile, totally fresh build. So there we go. Let's see if it blows up when I plug it in. And this will be cool. I haven't seen blue uh, LEDs before. There it is. Let's see what this one on this side does. Yeah, just that one missing. Cool. Let's see how banged up these motors are, and then I'm going to pack my shit and go. So we are going to plug it in here. I'm not going to turn the camera around. I'm just going to let you guys listen. We are going to hook up a 6S battery. Man, this quad looks good. It's got purple LEDs in the middle and the back. Whew. All right, let's see. Ooh, that one's beautiful. Ooh, so is that one. Ooh, so is that one. Okay, I guess I put fresh motors on. <laughs> I thought I was putting used motors on, but these are fresh. Cool. Let's go up to 1,300. All right, let's see how the vibes are here at 1,300. To check that, I just pick the quad up and hold it in my hand. And I'm basically checking for, like, frame resonance. Nope, good to go. Cool. That's how you repair them motors. <laughs> All right. So, I am back up to a fighting force of two glides again. Happy days have arrived. Man. Been down on rigs for a while. All right, so I need to bring that. Get these out of the way. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave this place a fucking mess because... Uh, sunlight is fading. Uh, you guys be good. I'm gonna go fly as much as I possibly can before it gets dark as shit. And, uh, I will maybe come back on tonight or maybe tomorrow. Uh, worst case it'll be tomorrow as long as I don't wake up in a world of horrible brain pain. Uh, yeah, be good. Thanks for hanging, guys. You rule. I will talk to you again either tonight or tomorrow. Later.